Definitely, definitely. Let's get right into it. I honestly, Ethiopia, Germany. Interesting sieve combo. Uh, I haven't seen that at all this tournament so far. What do you reckon? Germany will be looking to go for more the cavalry base role, putting pressure on with the raids in Siberia with the defensive tower may make Germany's time a bit harder. It's actually quite a large map in the mm. team situation. We are playing on the... Are we? Yes, we're playing on the uh, older patch, so we haven't got the new Tangri natives on Siberia. That will have to wait for another time, all you native lovers, unfortunately. Oh my god, look at that game knowledge. <laughs> it's excellent. Could you imagine I'm sure if Paris... Yeah. Yeah, that Go treasure is a big treasure. That spawns near um, Tinnis' base. And unfortunately, Tinnis is nearby his own base, dealing with weaker treasures. Probably looking to go for wood-based treasures. Siberia littered with the wood tra treasures, helping to go shrine. But uh, in Tinnis' ba base, we're seeing um, an early market as well. He has gone for the consulate, but to drop down a market as well does seem a little bit greedy. He must have seen two wood treasures with his local vicinity. Exactly. I yeah. don't imagine... I don't imagine Germany traded any wood to um, Japan to get this down, but it seems very... He doesn't um, need to. He's, got, he's, he's started with, with 80 wooden base, 240 wood treasures. That's why he, Japan's dream. Oh, and another 75 wood at the front here. Lucky bastard. Wish I had that spawn every game. Yeah, so you can kind of start to see why Siberia was just the kind of go-to default yeah. tournament map back in... Um, Taz times, but when ESOP oh, yeah. was starting up, this was the time when most of the newer maps hadn't been created or invented. This was like the default map, like the best of the bad bunch created by the original game developers and just littered with wood treasures. And then it was like, oh, okay, you can do early uh, trade and post, maybe get a house here. You got the outpost to help defend. It was the semi FF's gang's dream <laughs> setup. Definitely, definitely. Uh, I just want to know, Harrison, tell me why the, the settler wagon started on berries. What's the benefit to that? I was hope I was having a look into that. I wants to say a animal was walking in between the berries, clicked the animal, or thought they clicked the animal, went into the berries. You've got to remember, uh, even in early age one, there's going to be lots of APM, just trying to make the most of your explorer, trying to kite your treasures, trying to not lose too much HP. Mm. And... Those uh, food gatherers would be counted as food gatherers, so you wouldn't see them as idle, so that wouldn't be ringing any alarm bells. And so he goes over and just looks at the settler wagons, gathering like, oh, berries, yeah. going, What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> He's like, You son of a bitch, you cost me. It's only like, like, what, 20, 30 food age one, right? He's, he's made it up. He's going to make it up with 80 food treasure. Also, I got, I got to rate the, um, the treasure micro from these guys. I. It's, it's difficult, especially when you're microing your early bills and, you know, hunts can be a pain in the ass in this game, so... You can see how Aiken's uh, down quite a lot of HP there. He's got tried to work on his um, food treasure. Germany is one of those civilizations. They want to age 17 villager population, but they don't quite um, have the resources to hit up every time without any mm. idle time. So this is a crucial treasure for him, and that should help him get to that 800 mark and kind of uh, neg negate and make up for that earlier era with the berries. Looking at Jeremy's deck here, pretty standard. This is a 2v2 game, so you can't go too um, greedy with the team cards. I like, mm. I do really appreciate the balance between eco and military cards in H3. Having a skirm, cav, and a dragoon option is very useful for a supporting role that Germany may be playing here. We've also got Westphalia as well. Uh, we're going to see... Uh, I really wish at least... Uh, he's not going to see it this time. We don't need ca cards for it. But I just want to see one time. Just one time in a tournament game where someone goes speedy dots. I just want to see it. Uh, I'll look at uh, Japan's deck as well. Uh, Team Geneva? Interesting, interesting. And he's got two, two of the um, rice paddy ones as well. What do you make yeah, of this? Maybe, Eco is... Yeah. Well, is he missing any crucial cards in age two? He hasn't got uh, two Yumi archers, or so the Yumi archer times by two. My Japan knowledge is a little bit lacking. Looks like he's missing, yeah, Yumi archer and three hundred mm. export. But when you have daimyo, two Ashi shipments, and you know four crate shipments, two village shipments, age two, I think trading out a three hundred export card for a potential longer game investment is absolutely fine. It's more curiosity in age three how. He looks to be going Yabu Sam heavy, but there's no other military cards. No nag five naggies mm. or the 
the Yumi Archer cards, uh, classic H4, Honored, Flaming Arrows, Flaming Arrow upgrade, and the Shogun. Mm. Interesting that they're not really going to rely on all the war wagons. I don't know. Does, it, does he think uh, Aiken can actually uh, mass up enough, or do you reckon it's just for like a cat, I mean, artillery sniping sort of thing? Uh, I, I, I don't know, because in team environments, games I've played, Germany kind of defaults to war wagons, mainly because another team on another team on their team takes the skirm role, mm. and, and Ulan's kind of our XP donators <laughs> in the um, community, let's say. But maybe skirmishers could play the role here for Germany, because mm. he can focus on Nagi, you have a Sam's. Uh, we'll, we'll have to find out. Let's have a look at um, can do any potential forward bases. I think we're going to potentially... Nah, it looks like we're just getting the... Um the mountain monasteries onto those forward coin mines. Actually pretty good, uh, gonna be claiming those rather than the ones at the back of his base. Obviously much more safer, but uh, gonna get some good line of sight there, uh, as well as draining those forward mines. Uh, good a quick look at um, Izard's and Paris' deck before the opening raids and opening actions happen. It looks like pretty similar to be fair, almost identical. That is, that is, more, that is are you sure you changed, you looked at the upright deck, because that is basically the same. Yeah. Basically, no, yeah, except it doesn't have the no dots and little ones, yeah. yeah. Um, t oh. Team Chiotonic T C is quite nice. Triple um, military cards in H2, maybe expecting a bit of pressure. This is from Aiken's point of view. So he's playing with Kinesi Japan, which so a sieve which sometimes gets a, raided quite a bit in H2 or under oh. pressure. So the military cards there give him option to defend. Mm. Uh, a lot of coin upgrades for the plantations make sense for the coin heavy units. But uh, a couple lands here from Tick crossing the map, being pushed back by Perez's, I guess, Kenya's. Nothing too uh, out of this blue yet. We do see, I think, Izad Zolan's going into Kinesi's base and moving back. I think he's found the Explorer nearby. Mm, yeah, down, actually, down yeah. Kinesi's, Kinesi's, Kinesi's Explorer's under pressure here and doesn't want to lose get, it. That's big. He'll get the shrine up there, surely. Oh, no. He, he abandons the shrine. That's. Just you, you have to. You, you cannot lose your Explorer like that. It's. And when you have the poof ability, he's got to make it. He's trying to finish off. We've got two more coming in. That's going to be clutch. Nah, he's he's going to get killed before he poofs. That's dead. That is dead. That's one explorer down. Shrine pop, um, potential here for Japan. Severely reduced and more is on the way for pressure. And yeah, so far, nice opening there from Izad. Interesting. He's going to push him with the guest Genya and try and take this uh, 300 XP treasure. Um, obviously, want to really deny Germany that one. Um, yeah. Well, why why would you not? You're not under pressure from Tits or Lance because you've got one of the best anti-cavalry um, muskets in the game. You've got the chaos ability, so they're actually not attacking. He's just got to kill the explorer, and he's basically safe. He just it just raining spears death. of death from there. It's absolutely insane of a unit that is. I love how Tits going in. And he's he's trying to like no, give me back the treasure, but he, he knows he has to give it. He knows he has to concede. He can't he can't fight that. And also Ashley coming out as well, gonna uh, start forcing back the lines, at least protect two of those shrines up there. Um, interesting to see if he uh, takes the top hunt as well, potentially. But there's just such a such a large Ulan. Oh, uh, the, the monk might get scouted out. Is he that, is, is that might be diving into the Japan. But it, oh, he's, I think he's, he, he can sniff it. He can sniff it. He, he can try and find the sus. monk. Oh, he's got it. He's got oh, he sees it. Yeah, he splits he it off. It. He splits it off. <laughs> That's on low HP, though. Oh, he, he gets the poof out just in time. We do see Tits trying to snare Izaz Olans here. He's got less Olans here, so Izaz may be tempted to stand and fight back. He realises that his teammates' musketeers are out of position. Notice how both players here are going from musk uh, husk combo, as in musketeer mm. cavalry, hand cavalry combo. Gaskin is trying to catch up, but Ashley Garris with their 4.5 speed. Really um, efficient musketeers in the team environment on a large map track gets to cross the map at a decent pace and um he could be Paris is just trying to react i don't know if to uh, it, would you if force they took the fight, fight now i if i took the fight now with the current units i'd be favored in perez but we are close to kinesi's base for reinforcements uh, mm. the entire army movements have been scouted up by the shrines so i'd be feeling quite awkward here from perez's point of view. you see he's now backing away even before he's even seen what he has to deal with, but uh, Izzard has gone gone all the way home here. Both German players here looking to um, semi FF to already in the third age. I'm sure Izzard's aging up right now. His cavalry's nice and safe, but I think Paris is like, I need you nearby just in case shit's going down. 
balls on this mate and taking another coin treasure whilst they're right. The, I love that the guest game map is just is just out enough right now that he's just wandering around the map, you know, just baiting them in, trying to get them to take a fight and just easily being able to take all these treasures. Um, just boasting of up. Although the Ulan's gonna take a volley as well now, gonna weaken them up. And the explorer gonna take an absolute butt ton from these Ashy. <laughs> I feel like War Wagon would play a massive role here. No, no Civ really going uh, light, inf light infantry at all. Uh, potentially three War, War Wagon coming out with the stable, or is he going to continue patching all lines? He's got the res for it. Uh, You're looking at his point of view, so... Oh. Uh, Northern, Northern yes, player. yes, 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 I knew that. <laughs> uh, we'll have a look at it. Yeah, here, here comes the War Wagons, yeah, exactly. Um... But quite a bit, bit of wood there um, floating. Is that he sent 1k wood looking to go for a second town center? I do see one exactly. town center dropped. Yeah, makes good makes good sense. I think he's as explorer to the north side also looking to drop down a TC on that gold, exp trying to expand. Germany doesn't really have any other way to expand their eco than making more villages from town centers. I know it sounds obvious, but uh, it's not like... Um, but he needs to secure those mines as well. Yeah. Like, you can't, like, obviously you can position your army up there to, you know, deny any raids, but at the end of the day, you know, look how, look how far north it is. Um, it's not like it's a mid-map coin mine or anything, so yeah, town center going to have to go down up there. Nice little raid here from Tit on the western flank, going past the trading post here of, he's had that, will get scouted, but Geskin is there, ready to intercept, and that shouldn't, it's oh, going to hand combat, they melt, oh, oh wow. Exactly like you said, the free XP wow. is being handed I, over. It, it's, fi it's 15 with a three times multiplier, so they're, they're stronger than Musk's, they're stronger than Jan's, Ashy's in melee, and it, their range combat as well. The all round combat is just a fantastic, it's just a fantastic unit. With the also 4.5 speed, it's just one of those special Musk's. It is still the strongest Musk in the game, I suppose it can oh, be definitely. argued. It can be argued that their wood cost is kind of makes up for that in the sense that it bounces the unit out, which is probably fair enough. The war wagons might be able to pick up some little ones here for free. I think he doesn't see them. Yeah, look at that reaction time from Ezad. Going to pick up some free uh, war wagons there, and uh, we got to love that Tits already got its great coats in. He's not. He's not leaving anything up to chance. <laughs> oh, you're already getting conf confused with the Germans. You mean Ezad's picking up some free Ulans with his war wagons? Oh my god! Some free war wagons. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking like, where's the war wagon going down? This is huge. No, no, no war wagons going down. Done it again. Not seen any skirmishes yet on the field no. here from the German players, which makes sense. But uh, would you see, I see Ethiopia here from Perez. He can go into the left ten years. Would you carry on with the guest Kenyans or go go into left ten year? Mm, I feel like I just I just switched straight off to left ten years. I feel like he's got enough like anti cav sort of he, he, like the war wagon starting to get batched out. He's got enough guest Kenyans out, and he is switching straight to left ten years as we see right now. Um, it sucks that the Mountain Morris series will go down except for my east at a point in comfort. Hey, I notice um, Tit is on the eastern flank with all his Ulans. He's raiding with cavalry here. He's keeping his war wagons for the main fight. I think he's acknowledged that Ulans here in this fight, if a fight does happen, is really not going to contribute as much as he hopes. He's exactly. just trying to split them off. And uh, the he's he can do his raiding. Can just, yeah, it's, it's, any, any villagers being produced will just be sat inside the TC, just chilling. They can't get out. He'll take that all the time, yeah. What's that taunt? I'll take that trade. I'll take that trade. <laughs> I love it, I love it. I gotta get the Aesop taunt pats on this, um, on this account. Oh yeah, they, they, they are, they're classic and they, 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 they have to be treasured for a long time and they just get better with age. <laughs> exactly. They, they call me, and they call me Gajalita. I mean, there's, there's plenty of it. It's probably the worst one to pick out, but uh, I don't I'm not going to use the just lost a giant trash can because we haven't, the game hasn't ended just yet, so that's a wait oh, until wow. that happens. Maybe, maybe, maybe if Perez loses to a Titanista, he will just rage and go. I've just lost a giant trash can. Oh, someone's redeemed the Jaws music. Yeah, do you reckon? Uh, what's the game looking like? Yeah, Tit and can you see? Do you reckon they're going to favour the longer game or he's and Perez with map control at the moment? Um, uh, can we look at can we look at um, can you see his, uh, shrine pop? He's taken to the score lead at the moment. As the game goes on, I imagine he'll be the one. He's already two charges. And he's going four. Yep. Yeah. As you can see, I can kind of understand that because because no major fighting has had been happening. There's no real 
uh, needs to train in mass amounts of military units, just enough to feel somewhat defensive and try and dissuade. Bit of a fight coming down here. Tit needs to be uh, moving forward with long range dragoons. There are a small batch of F10 units, so that skirmisher switch has happened, but uh, not enough to, to, uh, to take on the fight with the war wagons. Kinesi moving in still with lots of Vet Ashi. Does have some bestiary crossbows for the Portuguese consulate? No indication that Kinesi is switching into Yumi Archers at this moment in time, so they're still going to go for this must cav wall wagon play, but um, a lot of anti cav here, but uh, not too much damage to do versus Skirm Inc., which could be how Perez is going to play this. Definitely. If we notice, like on the back line uh, under Kinesi's base, Shrines are getting siege and a few raids coming down as well. He's going to have to pull all those villages off that coin line. That's almost 15 villages and some war and some settler wagons. Mm. Luckily, uh, Japan has saved to keep all his villages inside the base there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking at this blue, blue blobs on the eastern side. I think there's a bu bunch of villains going past a couple of shrines. Didn't see anything doing, but uh, shrines in deep line. There's a touch trigger in there, it's fine. But uh, needs to go and move back. Well, there's, there's, there's no need for Titanese to push too far. Uh, can you see he is in the fourth age. He's sent it in double flaming arrows now, so he has the Shogun or the Daimyo from the age up to uh, spawn them at, from a forward position. Mm. Maybe looking to go to guard Ashi behind this as well. Look at the score difference between Tit and Izad though. Izad on three TCs um, producing villagers. No real raiding on his side. He's taken the Ulan advantage. Uh, Tit's gone more of a war wagon heavy. Composition where he's just kind of scattered in a few war wagons here and there, but uh, has kept his Orlando along and alive to just be an absolute nuisance here trying to you, raid you can imagine all positions. The, the trumpet going off constantly. Oh, your shrines are being raided, your shrines are being raided. Yeah, I know, I'll get to that. It's just going to be so fucking frustrating. But maybe forced at the front here, though. Oh, oh the okay. wagons are free. Izad has seen the four flame arrows there from uh, can you see, he might not dive into there. And uh, yeah, the, but there's four flame arrows. F10 years at risk here. They can't re stare around. They're going to lose. And um, somehow. How did no one die there? I know he pulled back. <laughs> <laughs> he managed to pull back, but. I expect a little bit. Now we're gonna see it's still on one town centre. Yeah, didn't he? Oh, he did put one up here, but it got sieged down. Would you... But what, what's you interesting, he, he, well, he, he can well, chuck he, another he needs, one down. You need, you need some more town centres. It's interesting how Izad with a three town centre had more of a military at that moment to try and take that advantage and take down um, to its second town centre, which usually should be the other way around. If you only go for one extra town centre, you should have more military mass military, to take yeah. the advantage and punish the greediness. I mean, they really got him contained on the left side here. Look, he's getting a town centre up here to get this um, far left silver mine, but man, monastery on his uh, closer one. That's pain in the ass right there. Have to be avoiding... I love this push here from Kinesi, though. It's eight flaming arrows moving forward. They're just going to keep charging. Oh, it's just the it's damage. Crazy, yeah. <laughs> Two yeah. war wagons down. Oh, he did, he did get the dime see... here, though. Yeah, and you can see that they're honoured war wagons. It does actually matter that no more shipments can be dropped to the Daimyo because he doesn't have any military shipments in H4. It's just um, an honoured, it's just the Flame and Arrow upgrade card, which would be quite nice, but it's like a Flame and Arrow combat and uh, cost. But uh, the F10 years having to be pushed back. Flame and Arrow is getting some good volleys. And when you've got eight Siege and with a decent base damage and lowish multipliers, they can certainly pick off many casualties of war as well. It's not like they do zero damage to other units which aren't artillery buildings or infantry. They still do a hefty punch. Yeah. At the Ooh. moment, oh, there's more than ten years going down and I'm worried because the honors Ashi count hasn't really been touched. It's not going down. And they have to wait for two coals. Coals come out, but uh, you still feel that eight honors Ashi should be able to win that trade. Bullring can actually get picked off here by the war wagons. That was take down two flaming arrows, but probably not the best trade there. And they're getting pushed back. A lot of bills getting idle now. Um, does end up saving the town centre just in time. The builders we've got to gather over there. It's the town centre. Got exchange one, more there. Volley, one more volley. Yeah. There we go. Another batch of reinforcing wool wagons. I feel like if they can push them off the coin mine, that's going to be a lot of idle time. <clears throat> Tossing these games, I've literally noticed that like all the high level um, gameplay is literally down to how much you can idle the opponent. 
how much, you know, you can auto, auto your opponent while well, you let your eco boom. And, um, like this is even how much how much losing one villager really matters. These these little details define. Um, yeah, as an exponential exponential factor as well. The fact the fact that Ezad's ahead of his relative opponents um, tip by quite a bit is not um, comparable to the difference between Kinesi and Perez. The scores are relatively similar. The team scores between the two teams are pretty much identical, but it's the tempo that Kinesi's got with the on a flame and arrows. He does. I think he's got a. Maybe a second TC in base and another TC out in the field, but he's certainly his eco is absolutely fine. Lost most of his ashes though, but he's now transitioned to more of a Yumi play. I think he realizes that Jeremy's pure going Wawagu and Neftenya here from uh, Ethiopia or either some Gas Kenya. So the anti infantry here, very nice. I think there's some Colvin shots there onto the Honored. Yeah, there's Colvin in the trees. A Colvin Royale here from Paris, but it's actually yeah, sure, it's just, it's just a flat Colvin. All the, <clears throat> almost all the flaming arrows have been picked off now already. Uh, what a nice flank there anymore. by, what a flank by Tit on the um, skirms and the Colvin on the western side. He's pushing forward onto the coals on the northern side to protect the flaming arrows, but uh, oh, he does take yeah, him just, out, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's the realisation that um, once you go between the two players, the reinforcements can't link up. You have anti-cab on one side and anti and skirmishes on the other side, so one's really weak to artillery and cavalry, and one's pretty weak to mass ashy and some war wagon, and that's how they're dividing their opponents up and taking favourable trades. The ash, these are uh, honoured flaming arrows have just got so much value. Yes, they may go down eventually, but they've taken so much to the outside with them. It's just two shipments, and they've just absolutely obliterated. The, you know, I wish you could see kill counts for units at the end of the game, just even like the top five units mm. that you've had. Such I think the Zulans there from Tish still on Perez's and F10 is in base, putting some good pressure on. He's having to sit back and he's can't gonna, even help this push. He's not going to kill him, but, but I mean, exactly like you said, he can't come and reinforce the fight because of that, you know? Also, Germany here from Izad's in a very dangerous position. Soon he'll be out of gold mines. It's not like he can really force he's, he's, got he's, got, he's got to get this map monastery down. And the other big danger as well is you do not want to be gold star and trapped in the third age before going to the fourth. Um, I must admit, actually, mass it's more of being trapped in the second age can't go to the, the third. Shogun one shots, shots the Culberry. <laughs> it's gonna no, already be damaged, right? No, it's definitely two shot. Culberry's a base 200 HP. He's gonna lose. No, 200, 220. 220, yeah, it's two shots, yeah. Yeah. Is he, does he know he's gonna. Interesting. But even still, the, the value, the value that Shogun got there, there was certainly more he than did, 20 he next 10 years. And he's forcing couldn't... all these bills idle, he's going to have to bring him back in the center. Force Perez to chuck up, oh, force Perez to chuck up a, um, a proxy wall here. And he's Let's look at the shipments that Japan has sent out. Notice he sent refrigeration and some of the paddy cards now, yes, yeah, so mm. he sent seven bills twice, he's sent upgrade eco cards. Let's look at a villager count for both players, or for all players, and um, summarize the eco position. 66 for Japan, 48 for Germany. So it hasn't... Do you, do you go Germantown Farmers next, or are you trying to transition to plantations at the moment? I feel like mines are going to run out pretty soon. Uh, Germantown Farmers is Ethiopia. too good of a card. Too good of a card? Hmm. Especially the has Ethiopia got any, has got any cattle? Because he's floating at the tribal marketplace. He hasn't. He got full trades available if he needs to. But he's not using them. He. he need, this is part. Oh my god. He needs to sell some of that off. He's. He's, he's got so much market capital to spend. Five hundred gold on the trade. Five hundred exactly. wood. He, he actually needs the food, and I've noticed this for a lot of African players is they refuse to eat the cattle with their <laughs> villagers. Like their cows oh, yeah, at the end exactly. of the day. They're, they're, they are great food source. This is what you want sometimes. They're just all, they're just literally just sitting there, like, oh, my guy, you can go H4 from this, like, am, am, I, am I totally right, he sells two, eats the rest, like, he can literally, not even the rest, just eat another two, he can go H, go H4, and then turn the target, turn the momentum of the game. I'm also a bit worried here for Paris, because he made a mountain monastery down to the south of the map. He did take five Abens down there, and I think they've all dropped, and that's not a cheap well, he's, investment he's having to reclaim them, so yeah. How much are these yeah, guys? Good. Piece? 150, it's not cheap. Not cheap at all. I see, we see some uh, Suicide Squad actually go, um, getting all the bills off that mill there. So smart though, that is. That is so smart. Just it's right click your base. Ashes. I love it. Mm. 
I'm gonna push up onto the left flank here, actually. I'm trying to uh, deny some of this res here and uh, potentially take out the TP. I mean, take the, the TC here. Um, but he's gonna leave. Yeah, you can't really push into that, can you? So they're gonna have to come back over and defend that. I love the walls coming down. He does not want to be raided. He doesn't want this Ashy, these Ashy raids to continue. Look at this. <laughs> Just the whole mid map <laughs> wall. These skirms have counter infantry left? No. You might find it easy if you just use the right click drag on the map. <laughs> it seems like you're just like darting across the There you go. <laughs> um, the map like speed wall walls. He's <laughs> gonna stick by here. Course. Look at the look at the mass from Germany. I mean sorry, from Tip. Jesus Christ, they could bloody 1v 1v2 this at the moment. Look at that, look at the wall wagon count and the skirms behind and the ghoul lines. Shit, that's a great fight for him. He's gonna clean up, but uh, he's gonna clean up Perez's army. Flamio is gonna come and take some shots off the Neft and the wall wagon still quite a bit of damage. And I feel like he can chase him all the way home here. The Neft and the Gascania really uh falling behind, I wanna say. Not really standing up to Isn't the line of the wall wagon. Isn't it interesting here from Tip that he feels that actually he does not need to fully produce um, cavalry and stay just the cav plays now transitioning to skirmishes as well just trying to kind of double produce uh, light infantry um is actually staying with the ashy so maybe the call is being called to go for ashy skirmisher play style instead of um He's trying to like maybe go war wagon ashy war wagon newbie but yeah the war wagons are they, they are trading they're preventing the cavalry threat but they aren't really being efficient fighters in especially in a musk war can you see with the faster muskets as well? He does have the Close advanced down, yeah. arsenal from the Golden Pavilion, so he can increase his um, stats to make him just a super efficient units to move in and take on these war wagons. Uh, very gold heavy there for the German player, and mm -hmm. uh, they're just marching in. That they're having to back. They they need they need some gold to do with the flame arrows just to maintain the trades, and then there's just so much stuff there from scores of peel so damage so output much. there. It's, it's more the it's more of the damage output that a whole mass of muskets can do in close range. It, I guess you can if you go pure skirms, you can do some good damage. Especially I think he has re yeah. I think Elise has realised he needs to go skirms as well. You do see the skirmishers being moved in on top line, so we kind of transition to like a double skirm or skirm musk for both players, just to try and combat this changing uh, unit composition. Well, Wagon's going to try and come over around for the flank onto the uh, flaming arrows here. Yeah. He's gonna get forced back, you're right. They actually just do so much damage in close range. Now look at the war wagons running rampant into the eco. I feel like I feel like it's, it's absolutely over at this point. Like scores you, of peel. You, know, you, you, know, you know when you feel pretty confident when you just take all your anti cavalry away from all the skirmishers <laughs> in your arsenal, leave them on their own just to try and kill two or three villagers. And you're like, I have got this, I can do this, it's absolutely fine. I don't feel under threat or pressure. There's he's no even, real He's even batching the levied spearmen from the hut. My god, I got the desperate. What's the play here? Probably, Do you reckon these are probably levied? In? Yeah, they probably levied units though, but you know, they are colonial units. They don't upgrade like the United States, so they don't really offer much threats into the face of honored ashes with upgrade cards and upgrade text. They just essentially are a waste of export at this moment in time. Surely, I haven't actually seen Perez use his export at all or his uh, seashells. Must be some constant units he can get on the map to help him. Interesting, gonna get a city wall up now. Uh, I just didn't notice, did you see how much uh, tip was floating? He's has got a bit in the bank, but oh my god. Tip and Kines here, absolutely floating res. Do you reckon the macroing for. Oh. The macroing for five, can they? No, no, tip, tip's still sure he's supposed to fourth age. Oh, yeah, he's he back. wants to get there. But he um, has German Town um, Farmers yeah, and 3TC. First game down. Yeah, the, Congratulations to Tit and Kinesi taking the series one yeah. 0 Yeah, the age up there from Tit at the end was just as a kind of a reassurance uh, mechanism wasn't definitely mm. needed. Uh, but um, Iza tried. To, I think Iza tried to age up just to try and get something. Maybe send some heavy cannons, try and get guard wall wagon, and try and uh, trade more efficiently because you just can't keep training veteran units into guard units there from Japan, especially after he's stabilized, got the techs in. Japan was supposed to be quite a bit of res. It wouldn't well. have 
it wouldn't have taken much to get in some honoured Nagis or honoured Yumis, like a second mm. uh, unit inside competition to really put the pressure on. He's at full villagers, he's at full shrines, he's got his Ecotex rolling in, and Titanisi, one of the stronger pairings in the tournament, and has taken the first game. Yeah, congrats, boys. Also, uh, chat saying how, how thick those cows are. Look at them go. They're bulking up. They don't look, <laughs> they don't look healthy, do they? They kind of look like... <laughs> no cow is meant to be that thick. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Look at them. Have you seen have you seen pictures of like some actual like, male bulls that like, they are they are as hench as pretty much those cattle there. They have a very BK. Like, a very broad look about them. Oh my god, that's ridiculous. Alright, let's take a quick look at the post game. Friends. I'm not really tributing it at all these aren't either. And uh yeah. Katie's looking pretty good, honestly. Tip coming ahead of two to one. Not bad at all. Not bad. I'll check out the timeline as well. Well, oh, sorry, pop here. Fuck me. Look at that remass. Jesus Christ. He's gone from Language. 20, 20 to over hundred. <laughs> GK, am I allowed to swear on the stream? You, you, you give me the, you give me the results of that. But yeah, look at that, Harrison. He's remassed so quickly, and like, you know, I, I feel like Tip's done pretty good too, but that's. I wouldn't necessarily call it a remass. At that point, um, I think they were pushing out there with the Flaming Arrows. Uh, Tit had it larger mass to cover the artillery, but, you know, mm. Kinesi's in the fourth age. He's got full population of eco. He's got capacity to spend units. He's probably got the Japan um, tech to train batches of 10 units at a time. He's just pushing that advantage forward and forward. And yeah. Izad is hanging on it. If you notice, if you look at the all the resources gathered, I think Izad drastically outgathers hit but um in the fight between Perez and Kinesi in the Civ War as well it just yeah. it's just going straight into uh Kinesi's favour and um he's just taking the taking the trade between those two civs is much greater than the trade that EZ had versus Tit. Definitely. I feel like yeah Ethiopia is just I feel like shot shot him in the foot there. I've I've n I don't think this tournament we've seen someone win as Ethiopia yet. At least in the games on Castle I don't think. I feel like it's just very underwhelming in twos. It feels like Ethiopia is one of those things you kind of need to be offensive and have some direction and attack uh, with them. There's a bit of moving about, positioning musketeers and cavalry from both players in the second age, but no no team really wanted to initiate the fight, if you know what I mean. They, they try mm. to catch a, a, a component of somebody's army out, so maybe if Ashes were alone, then guess Kenya Ulans will, will take a great trade there, but they didn't really want to trade off armies before the get up to the next stage. Part of that is just good team play, part of that is a tournament, they don't want to get too risky. But just look at it, um, can you see there, it does go for like a, I believe he went for a 600 wood, 4 vil, 600 gold build order in the second age. 7 vil first card in age 3, just to really keep that um, economy going. Wasn't sending too many military shipments, stacked up those shipments before he went to the 4th age. Age up with the Shogunet XP bonus into double batches of 4 flaming arrows, drop a castle, honoured flaming arrows, and it's just the momentum that Kinesi got at that from point there. from those are, yeah, it's it's just it's just the momentum and without having the best part of five culverins yourself on the other team, which if and if you're making five culverins you've just invested an artillery foundry and two thousand five hundred gold plus the wood to get the artillery. Mm. <laughs> but you're down in the regular military. It, it's it, I mean, they are free shipments, that's the point, they are shipments. Especially with the extra XP but um the the other players in H3 just couldn't really react to and compensate. Just can't keep up with it, yeah. Exactly, exactly right. We'll get into the next game real quick. Oh, something's happened. Old School RTS, thank you for the tier one sub gifted to Perez. Oh, how fitting, how fitting. I love it. Great community, guys. Thanks for that. Um, all right, Harrison, I'll quickly get over to the next one. Um, but GG's, guys. Uh, good stuff. And uh, actually, <clears throat> I won't load it up just yet because I'll do the prediction and that way I don't pause. See, I remember, I remember. <laughs> right, game uh, two, all set to go, and we will quickly switch this over. So, um, <clears throat> once again, congratulations to Kinesi and Tit taking the series one nil. Have to just give us one second, folks, and we'll get into the next one. Let's have a quick look here at the prediction. Oh, Jesus, almost 1.15k uh, in betting right now, and uh, 
the minority is going to get a one to three return on this. No one, everyone went for Ezan and Prez in that matchup. But, uh, Jesus, 14,000 channel points going over to, um, Tit and Kinesi supporters here. So congratulations, boys. Enjoy the channel points. Uh, feel free to use them on uh, the sound alerts. But, uh, without further ado, uh, let's launch up game two. Uh, so good at rhyming. I know, I know. Alright, So game two here going to be on Patagonia. Uh, sorry folks, give us one second here. There we go. Alright, uh, game two gonna be on Patagonia here. We're gonna be seeing India and Hausa from Izad and Perez starting on the bottom map versus Kinesi and Tit on the top. We'll be seeing Aztec and Russia. As a potential for some more to play here, Harrison? Um, yes, no, I was just looking in chat, he's just saying that this was a uh, game two, which, which is fine if that's agreed, because I, I believe I, I might look at the map, but I thought this was game five, but um, yeah, I thought it was uh, game five yeah. as well. I was, like, I was like, I was like, no, 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 it's game five, <laughs> yeah, but that, mean, that, that, means, that means it's a great series. But, but, oh, it's, it's actually games, oh, it's game two, okay, that's I, I, I think the map pool is just messed up, but anyway, yeah. Uh, I, I, I'm glad to see Patagonia here. I think as a 1v1 map, it is interesting. As a 2v2 map, it's not as um, tough, let's say, on natural resources like Hunts and Mines. So it does play mm. feel like a normal map, but there's strategic options here. We've got the huge Bountiful Sea on the eastern side. I think in Definitive Edition, uh, the res in this seat has been turned down in RE. It was like eight whales in the 1v1 <laughs> seat. It was incredible water map. Both teams have access to a defensive three TP trading line as well, so mm. I'm expecting both players, both teams to work together to get the stagecoach up as fast as possible. And a pond in the middle. You get to see some um maybe Modern some play, frigate laymans, some monitor yeah. laymans, some uh, water play and uh interesting position here for uh forward bases because this is an interesting one. All civs here have buildings which they can place offensive in age two, which um, mm. attacks. So we have the agri fort We've got the uh, fortresses there from Hausa. Maybe not the war camps, but they do have Definitely palaces fortresses, and fortresses yeah. at this end. Kinesi's got the war huts. Aiken's got the blockhouses. And we might see a, just a four buildings on top of each other spam right in the middle. That would be that would be classic if it was true. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Don Artie asking for the fish count. <sighs> what do we think here? Looks like... What's the fish, fish count, Harrison? I'm, I'm looking at... I'm, I'm, I'm going to estimate, I'm gonna estimate there is 50 regular 50? fish on the east side. I reckon Jesus. 50 pods of fish. How can you might be right? Because look how many, there's like, the yeah. it's like all here, all clumped together. Um, also, real quick, old school RTS. Thank you for the uh, tier one sub gifted to EZAD. Enjoy, enjoy. Uh, thanks for the support, guys. In case you're coming out, before we get into looking at decks, I would like to hint at um, an upcoming tournament that is sponsored by Microsoft. I hope you guys uh, are following that. Uh, won't leak too many details, but um, let's just say it's a bit bit of an old school tournament. Uh, so you might want to do some research on that and uh, see how Microsoft that, is supporting the AOE3 scene. Can explode, so it can explode. That was the worst. That was the worst way to plug and announce a tournament by saying, yeah. oh, oh, "Oh, might be a bit old school." <laughs> Ooh. Take a look for yourself. I can find it, that's, out. That's, I bet you that's code word for I don't actually know what's going on. Uh, so Microsoft has contributed to a 1v1 tournament with a total prize pool of $6,000. There will be qualification events with the main final event, including eight players who will fight out for the prize money. I don't know full details. Uh, I, I only really found this out on this week as well. I was like, wow, that's amazing. Um, so we'll, we'll find that out. It's going to be 1v1. It's going to be based around the King of the Mediterranean uh, downloadable content um, well, DLC. So to participate, I believe it is a requirement to have access to the King of the Mediterranean DLC as most as the Civ rules will be based around the inclusion of those Civs, i.e. Malta and Italy in the 1v1 environment. So right, there'll be plenty of extra uh, saves as well, and probably we'll be featuring all on the European maps. So we'll pl see plenty of new um, treasures being taken, new natives being used, especially now with um, some of the more interesting native mechanics, which I'm 
thoroughly on fully board with the decision there. Like, I'm very happy and pleased to recommend that for competitive gameplay. <laughs> I, this will be a season of new strategies and new uh, uh, it, uh, potentially broken strategies. So it'll be interesting to watch. But uh, certainly take your time now to practice your um, new sieves. Familiar with the new nats and maps. You're going to need it. It's going to be mental. Definitely, definitely. We see some, uh, definitely some aggressive play here. Going to be uh, chucking it up against the coast, chucking the four bases up against the coast here. And uh, going to be starting War Hunt Blockhouse. So going to be hard to push back out into that if um, the rush fails. Uh, Iza and Perez are going to have a hard time uh, dealing with that. So you know how I said about the offensive buildings with defensive capabilities. We've got two buildings with strong anti-ship attack right next to the coast. Aiken has moved his water flag into the pond. He maybe wanted to send two caravels at some point to help solidify that shore. But what he's done very well as a team is they've kind of gone in between the two bases of Perez and Izad. Izad's got his Agra forward. They're looking to take the kind of middle map, that middle uh, channel. But actually, the Agra fort is kind of on its own. The town center from India is unprotected. Perez is kind of cut off to the side. And um, Kinesi and Aiken here looking to really direct and dictate the pace of the game where they want to push where they want to attack and um, it's going is that's just thinking of why is my agri fort here at least in base something would be even better but it's this is really oh, already against this like uh sort of hill here that would be a great spot for it right there could you imagine if it was they blocked by the tree line blocked by the little uh cliff there they have to go all the way around and there's a beautiful choke there definitely on my phone. Uh, Tits making the early mistake of going cavalry versus house, so there's nothing which can beat the Javelin Rider, a, a very well-designed, balanced unit. Not at all overpowered and strong, uh, not a mobile Dragoon unit in age 2 with a 45 hand attack versus cavalry. They do get into hand combat, nothing, nothing um, out of as a team here to uh, really make the most of their units and, and um, cover all the unit types across the board. Definitely, definitely. I love that um, <clears throat> Tit is leaving nothing to chance. He doesn't want any raiders coming in his base. Absolutely walled the left side, although he has missed a tiny little passage there. So well, that's a, to see. That's, um, tiny, that's a tiny little crack between two um, mounds. What does that remind you of? I'm not, don't say it. We... Hey, I didn't say it. I didn't say it. I was just you thinking that. It's not my fault. Just but you see how the, the two players here of um, Titanesia imagine to just move between base and base. Uh, Perez is trying to rush over his mobile anti cav dragoons, but there's a lot of sepoys on the eastern side. Maces will have a nice time kind of looking for um, uh, Aiken to go into Stradets now because a lot of anti cav is present in terms of Puma Spearmen, so the actual musketeer requirement is not really needed here from. Um, the Russian player. Cossacks are trying to run away from the Jav Riders and the Mace Holtons. I'm doing some heavy lifting here, kind of having to hold the military away while the Puma Spearman sees Jagger. Remember, if, if this Agra goes down with the Aztec Warchief nearby, he may get up soon. He's, he's nearly going to get revived. That's going to be the best part of 720 experience, maybe with the three times we push in a thousand. Yeah, so true, Jesus. Oh, the, the siege on those pure spearmen, bloody hell, it's just so fucking high. Is it pure spearmen of the highest siege per pop, per age to pike? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised, but quite a lot of the quite a lot of the spearmen based units are around the same level. It's not it's not an abnormally high unit. But to remember, back in the old days, Puma Spearmen used to get classed as siege troopers, so Minutemen would absolutely shrek them. But now they're just classed as regular infantry units. So actually, Aztecs have a very strong uh, skirm pike option, age two, mm -hmm. in the Puma Spearmen Mace Holtons. It really gives a nice uh, playstyle. He's going to be sending the three trading posts, so we'll also claim the. Uh... The back line there are uh, some nice safe, safe TPs, get stagecoach, although they're going to be um, behind because Perez has already uh, sent that one through. Um, interesting, he hasn't... No, I don't think he, he... He can't really squeeze in stagecoach right now. I feel like there's too much early pressure. No, it is, it is too much pressure, but essentially how so they do get a free stagecoach anyway, because he set his um, train post to the export income or whatever it's called, influence, seashells. 
rocks, whatever they want to trade at the market. So you should be able to get some decent units there with that. I think he's going for... Oh, what was he spending him on? Oh, he's sending Lafidi Knights. That'd be a good um, use of that resource here. And actually, Lafidi Knights on top of Shalit, some May Sultans. Not enough Puma Spearmans. I think he's actually asked for his teammates to try and focus on the Puma Spearmans as much as possible. Um, Jabcav pulling back, trying to entice the army underneath that town centre. Could be a time for some Levy Bowmen to be called from the house. It's, it's, or is that just say Ethiopia specific thing? It might just be Ethiopia specific. I don't actually know. Seems Do you know? Because anyway, it's... does that? Oh no, it's both of them. It's both of them. Yeah, they both oh. call it. Yeah. Has anybody figured out the African civs yet? It's been a year, <laughs> yeah. or maybe two. I, I don't know. Ah, <laughs> oh, the Lafidi's um, right onto the Stolets and. Harrison, there's literally no anti cav here. Even as even when Gurkha switch going out, um, we'll be able to clean up the rest of these Gillette and um, Slingers here. That's a, a bummer has being committed to that fight and we'll get picked off. They didn't get that much value eventually. Oh yeah, I was just looking at all the Puma Spearmans here from Kinesi went to try and connect with the Javelin Briars. They got some good trades there, but that was their only protection and going down. Actually, a batch of Maze Holton was being produced there from Kinesi, just to finish off that batch. Human Spearman's gold-based unit, Maze Holton's wood, so Kinesi might not have the right macro to try and just be. He needs to get on the gold very quickly. Three TPs at the back. Uh, the TP lines are different um, states, so I would assume that Kinesi has got the stagecoach, and uh, maybe he's going to try and just sit, but um, the scores do suggest that naturally each India and house just pushing forward a little bit more house's score is insane already like wh what they've yeah. done to deserve a score like that is, is that just is that just the presence of the influence from the trading posts really I'd say so it's got to be the trading posts yeah interesting to see that kinesi is just getting gonna get given is going to have free water and it's going to be locked down by uh tit's shipment of two caravels um mm. Uh, does the water get revealed on this map? No, it doesn't get revealed on this map. No. Oh, he's gonna chuck it in the- he's gonna chuck it in the middle. Oh, he's gonna be- he be- directly- I reckon he saves the blockhouse, he's oh, gonna get the big, onto big, the- big, big. Yeah, it's, it's, it's why they put, build the uh, blockhouses on the coast, is that the, the, the ships cover the blockhouses, blockhouses can, cover the yeah, ships, and you can't really push them. out with military, it's- because the amount of damage the ships do to land military is very, very mm. strong. Once, well, it's not even, it's not even, um, Perez is building there. That, that is, uh, Kinesi's water. It's gone down. We do see Perez dropping down a dock, though, so maybe he's looking to, to try and contest the water here, which he kind of has to do. Meanwhile, sneaky Kinesi, he can't spell Kinesi without the C. He's gone onto the water himself on the eastern side. Uh, double dock, triple dock, yeah, triple dock, mm. spamming, and he's has dropped a dock of himself to try and counter. So we're going to see water fight some and also uh, action both sides. Yeah, he's, 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 he's very experienced, he knows. You know, it's, 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 it's Pirates of the Netherlands. What do you think? Pirates of the Netherlands. Ah, Clark, Clark. Oh yeah, hey, that's the new, that's the new dad joke. What do you want? Netherland Pirates say Clark. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We are gonna see, um, <clears throat> I, I, I feel like uh, if he if he chucks it, yeah, he can always just do like a quick, you know, one, two behind the wall um, with the, with the car bells there. So like, I think, like you said, like he, they can't push this position. They literally just can't push this position. Their, their, best, their best bet is just force them off water and uh, uh, take the right side of the map, really. Um, now the javelins will siege down the wall and charge in, potentially try and catch some fills off that are away from the town centre, but they're all really... He's done a good job of hurting and they're all really under his town centre anyway. There's no blockhouse at home here for Russia, so he's tried to secure that middle map position, and Perez has done the smart thing, thinking, do I take on a defensive position back by caravels, and, or do I just go around it? He's gone around it, he's in the base, putting pressure We're on the eastern side with the Izad. Dual push with the infantry and caravels and buildings. Like, if you're going to take on the water, there, there's three components buildings, ships, and land military. You need to push with at least two. And the fact that he's got all three of them there, Kinesi's going to have a very hard time defending because he can't really attack with ju just naval ships because the buildings and the caravels will just dunk. And then the infantry just siege the uh, buildings for free. It's a really good mm. play there, that is. 
So, like, if he can... He's, he's going for a wide respawn, but after this, if he can get some XP out and then uh, get the water dance going... I haven't noticed it. <laughs> what? This must, okay, this, this must be, like, the most pointless bit of developer time. They've redesigned the Team Free Villager cars away from what the villager icon is. Like, you don't need to redesign oh, yes. a Team 3 build card. It's... All the team cards got changed, yeah. I, it's so annoying. What was it called? Is it not Team 3 builds? Is it, it Team, oh, yes. Oh, oh, just imagine Tick going, can you see, can you see, can you see? Uh, we need, we need, call the Capulli. He, he's typing it you know, out. What? Like, how do I call, the, call the Capulli. <laughs> what, what, what is that? <laughs> how do you not know? It's as if you play, you should know the cards you have. The Capulli, send the Capulli in. The what? <laughs> It's like, is that an ego? Uh, is, that, is that an infantry or not? <laughs> there's so a lot confusing. of these changes. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of these changes. I just don't. It's not in the interest of the of the of the quotation marks consumer or gamer. It just is just adding more layers of just confusion to what already is. I, I looked at the, the team scout picture from Russia. I was like, what's this car? Is it a new car? I've never seen this car before. What is this what car? Is? Oh, is that car? Uh, Here comes Harrison. Water dance. These cars are going to get eaten alive. Ah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Is that a siege attack? Because oh, infantry can still push and do some good damage. I don't think they. Oh no, because it's the war dance. It's, a, it's all damage. Is that? Alex one of those saves is just in, in, incredible. But uh, this should be a decent trade with the two caravels. Uh, the two castles, three caravels. Oh, this this game has got more legs to it. I guess that they have held on. The score's still heavily in. Um, Perez's team advantage and the canoes here they won't be enough to break everything down just the four count of those that train very well does yeah, easy to have um naval combat in his deck oh, let's have a quick look he does he does, does. he hasn't sold it yet but he, he's um actually agent for the third age so his first card will be the two siege elephants yeah you can just chuck that on the on the coast and then deal with that um, really easily i love the counter wall here on the corner as well He's gone through wonder. the gap! He's gone through the crevice! Oh, yes. Perez! Perez has found the crevice! Let's all cheer for him, boys! Let's all cheer for him! Hooray! What well up? <laughs> I love it, I love it. Oh. So That's Harrison, such an empty moment, that is. What, from um, Kinesi and Tid's perspective, like, what do you do from here? Um, he's saying the two siege elements, obviously, but do you try and push water, or do you just, you know, do a mini 1v1 for the whole game? Oh, sorry, two 1v1s. Well, Kinesi's can, can kind of forced to defend water. He's, he's invested far too much into it, in terms of um, boats and canoes. And I think they, if they look at the scores, they realise that if they just transition to land from here and abandon the water, then the game's pretty much lost anyway. So he needs this to win. He needs to take on um, Izad here. And if Perez comes to help out Izad, then that opens the door for Tit to kind of do some nice counterplay. We do see quite a bit of mass on the left-hand side. Russia has pivoted across to the west. Australia and Musk's push holding back. Um, Jav, Cav, and Lafidi quite nicely. Um, both Perez and Tit are in the third age. Only one town centre here from Tit. Uh, second town centre down here now for Perez, but uh, with all this extra influence, those Lafidis are pretty strong. And uh, was he spending his influence on? Is it just text? Is it more. Is it other native units? Because I'm sure you, you age up with like. Nat Send in like native units, like maybe like a uh, elite Berber camels. Berber camels versus Russia, deadly. Could go for was it the Cannoneers or the Sudanese or yeah, Magadais. We... It, it could be. I, I'd want to know what he's spending the want... um, influence yeah. on. I wish I could see no, actually, no. the text from the players. Yeah, just see exactly what they what their options are. Uh, anonymous, anonymous. Thank you for the uh, cheers. I feel like that might be GK. Um, but thanks guys for the support as well. Start oh, elite, fire, elite the Lafidis on colonial musketeers and veteran shellers. Oh no, <laughs> this is a good fight here for Hauser. Uh, yeah, mi is it Minimum might be called, but I'm not going to really help too much. There's a quite a few Fulani archers in there as well, and some musketeers on the front line trying to get engaged. They will take some good damage here. More Lafidis coming in and Strats just now unprotected, and that's, that mass is going to go down. Izad is too pinned on the right side. He's, Starting to put pressure on the wall. He's actually cleaned up all the docks, so there's no more canoes coming out, and all the fishing boats are starting to get exposed. So he actually might go for the frigate option here, so the siege elephants straight mop up the water. But 
can he see the Paris is... with slingers? He's got some jags popping that he yeah. uh, batched out in the big button. But other than that, he, he can he can retreat to the dock though. I mean, to the caravels. Yeah, I think those caravels need to be brought over a little bit earlier to help out. They've kind of been chilling mid map uh, for far too long and. Uh, the score difference here, nearly 10,000 points between the Hausa and Russia, and this 1v1 is looking very dire from Russia's point of view, still only on the one town, so if he can't really afford, he's got villagers right next to the army here, so he has to defend, defend his take his fight to protect his bills. The party boats come out and will take a good uh, exchange here. That They are taking double damage here for blockhouses on the eastern side of the pond, they're still up, remember, they, they do do massive damage. I don't think the party boat is a siege ship, so they're taking full brunts. Had Caravel go down, he's going to retreat back to the dock and heal up. Oh, no, no, that's dead. That's dead. <laughs> bye yeah, bye. you go. Last shot gets it. Still has one slingers. Do we see a transition to Eagle Runner Knights, maybe, or what would you suggest? Um... Yeah, there we go. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with going Eagle Runner Knights. It depends if he aged up with the two Noble Huts. It's one of those age ups you usually do, but Kinnity here might have gone for the... Yeah, the two Noble Huts being thrown down. Or yeah. he, went for the, he went for the Elder, I think. His age up. Aztecs are one of those series I've, I've never played a game with Aztecs before. Never. Not once. Not even I've just never casual on. No. Nah. There, are, there are some series I've just never played a single game with. Just... It's not like not a no interest, it's just... Well, it's kind of no interest, really. Yeah. So it's like... It's like it's not no interest, I've never but I don't have an interest. <laughs> yeah, it's like... Like, my, my, my native civ would be Lakota, my Asian civ would be China, my Euro civs, well, they're all European civs, so yeah, and that's pretty much all the boxes ticked. Hey, you got one of everything in here. Oh, Faust is going to come out and get some nice balls on the Fulani. Is that too well, fast for Russia? Yeah, that's, that's been sent. That's fine. But yeah, the Fulani oh, here just keep in it. No, not not really risky. Not too many bills though. I, I think I've got about like seven, seven top. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's enough. It's enough to really hurt. <laughs> Three bills in the blockhouse just getting uh, pinged out, thinking, nope, I'm getting out of here quickly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not mining today. Yep, I'm out of here. <laughs> they do have a lot of natural res left in base though. To be fair. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, especially um, behind um, his base there is. Are like, look, they're haunted clean. And he still doesn't have stagecoach. Okay, yeah, that, that's, that is probably a mistake for getting that. But then, can you be blaming this action all over the park yeah. at the moment? Oh, some privateers coming out here from Kinesi. That's I think that's the full privateer card in age three for, is it 500 gold here for the Aztecs? Or is it still 1,000? I know that the natives get a cheaper privateer. Three shipment. and two, I think. Oh, from eight... Uh, from age two, send that in. Wow. Okay. I mean, it's, it's still it's that's a great age two card, but um, versus, with siege elephants on the field, you really needed to invest into the eagle runners. He's, he's sending eagle runners now, but he could have had eagles on the floor defending this, and then sending night combat afterwards. This is gonna emergency be batching those warriors. Definitely an underrated uh, unit. I can insta train. Yeah, they're free. Oh, no, 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 it's not underrated. It, everyone knows about the Warriors spam at Aztec. It's, it's, it's a new meta now, unfortunately. <laughs> My plans for... Could you imagine oh, if there was no cap on them? No, no, no. <laughs> you just... It's, 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 it's one of those, like, it's like, oh, yeah, we're going to remove the population cost here for the Warriors. Everyone's like, oh, that should be fine. And then just some people go... Oh, if that's the case, oh, oh, I can do this now, can I? Oh, I'll take that. Wait a minute. I'll take that, Joe. I'll take that. Yeah. Oh, interesting. The war canoes can. I never knew that. I didn't know the war canoes could garrison in the docks. You should never see war canoes made, really. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's compared to regular canoes, war canoes are probably not as cost efficient as a regular canoe. So that's where you see most people go in regular canoes, and obviously. Uh, with regular canoes, there's a lot of overkill on them as well, so... Where more canoes, because they've got high HP, they just sponge up all the damage and just get more efficiently killed. And they're not yeah. even that impressive as units anyway, so it's not really the go-to play. Oh, I said, if ever look on the left here, Corbin, you're going to be matched out to counter the um, Balancy, but I feel like it's kind of a stalemate. The Strelat mass is massive, and the... I feel like that is enough for Feedy, though. He has batched out some uh, cavalry archers, but the free... Um, a lot of safe space to get back to. 
I think he's trying to like position Ooh. himself up for a naval, naval landing, but you've got to be careful because Hausa have access to Culverins as well. There's also I, his event on the water. Oh yeah, it's not staying. It's not staying around any longer. All right, all right. Yeah, then. That... okay. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. I guess that's gone. <laughs> That's that Sebek on the water is just incredible. That's a, is that a mercenary warship? I think it's classed as mercenary. It's yeah. incredible. It's um, probably as strong as a Fulcan. Maybe a little oh, bit weaker. Dear. Look at that. I don't know my. I don't think that's a good shade at all. Yeah. Wall, if anybody knows bottom. about. Back. If anybody in chat knows about the Zebek versus Fulcan matchup, please let me know. I'd be very interested to read up on those um, battle notes, but. Uh... I wouldn't know, but just the amount of actual damage output there. It's a really fast fire rate as well. Whoa, whoa, look at that. Is that a one reload speed? It's a one reload. That's going to be very good clean up infantry, especially Russian infantry as well, low HP. Yeah, train another one of those and sit by the coast is the way to win. Definitely. They're only getting three frigates out here. Who wants to be taking this fight back against the castle? As in two thousand. This is this has been quite an incredible fight on the eastern side because Izad had docks down, castles down, and sepoys pushing um, docks. So Kinesi was, I I already wrote Kinesi off the water, but no one should ever write Kinesi off the water. Came back with a huge army to then, and he's still getting looked like here as well. yeah, yeah. They, they look like but Izad had no chance. But the fact that both players are kind of trading on the water, it, it's it's quite it's quite uh, cool to see. A fight can we and here? What's slowly. The... The, the, the problem is that Tit's still on one town centre and, and he's lost bills here and there, so he's just, he's just not, economically he's just not getting to the same point. And Perez's score is just accelerating. He's not. Perez doesn't need to win the fight here. He just needs to just grow and grow until he hits that fourth age and slams in with maybe um, Champion defeating Knights and takes better trades at that point. Here come the uh, Warriors again, getting emergency batched out. He's going to stay uh, Slingers as well. I think that's a fair play rather than going any one of the Knights at the moment. I feel like the water is sense. Uh, securely in his hands as well. It makes sense to go Warriors here, because it's not like you, if you go War Dance, it's not like you're boosting the attack on many units. It's only like yeah, 10, like 10, 15 on, on, on the map, so having those extra Warriors there to, to soak up the damage. And he's going to use the Arrow Knights to snipe the Siege Elephants as well. Oh, that's such a class play. Oh, ouch. Take the shots. Once, one CJ goes down, but this, the CJ is still up. It's, okay, that's a lot of damage. That's more than I anticipated. Yeah. That's not that's not the CJ. The Arrow Knights getting bonuses versus cold um, artillery and light cavalry. It's just the artillery, isn't it? Okay, that's mm. fair enough. Sixty. This is huge. Yeah. yeah, but it's it's usually most artillery pieces have a seventy five percent. Range resists. So it's actually not the attack, it's but... ranged attack. Yeah, so he did resist, mm. resist that as well. Yeah, but, but siege elephants don't have a 75% range resist. They just oh, have what high HP. And it, it doesn't matter. Like, it doesn't compare to 75% range resist. What they have is negligible in that. So, the damage output they're onto siege elephants is actually quite strong. Very impressive to see. But uh, KC starts. We'll need to try and get in some Eagle Run Knights as well because you can't really. Win too much with Mace's arrows, but you can see you can see his plan. He's, he's just going for range infantry wars to stop either getting in and trying to win. But now India's taken the command in position on the water and um, has secured that central belt and all those natural resources and safe gathering is, is what Russia really wanted himself. But he's had been run around and raided and pushed back by Perez, who's had a he's had a, he's had a cracker of game. Perez has maybe it's Perez himself or just Hausa being Hausa, but uh, he's certainly starting to win. His side of the map, and Kinesi's on a timer to kind of try and take middle back from Ezef. I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening, unfortunately. No, yeah. I feel like they held they held for quite a long time. They had the mass there, but I feel like at the end of the day, um, Ezef and Perez were just way too ahead from the beginning. Yeah, like they, and that if, Perez, well. if Perez went to the fourth phase, another thing he could do is just spam artillery because he's got instant access to guard, Falconet's guard. Culverin guard, horse artillery guard, mortars, because um, they're not a African unit, they get a shadow text, so they just have that um, nice kind of follow up. And especially when you use the Imperial Age, you just 
all artillery just comes from Imperial straight away. Where it costs, it would cost every European city like fifteen thousand resources to take five artillery pieces to Imperial. House is like, yep, no, thank you very much. That's that there, for me free. So just extra power spike. Actually, Paris taking a score. Oh no, he's at back. Those two point, those two boys jostling for who's um, gonna be the MVP of the game. But um, I'm gonna have to give it to Paris. Oh no, he's had a good one as well though. It's it's really hard to hard to think about. I personally give it to um, Perez. He's literally just done a one v one in the corner here, and yeah. I feel like Hausa versus Russia. It's not the easiest thing. Yeah. So, so Aztec's pushing back strong on the water, but he, he's pushing into two, like three TC, two castles, docks, and naval. It's costing Kinesi so much wood to do this. It's not it's not really helping his military. While all the um, TCs are spamming bills here from India, he has map. Most of the, got to the point there. The water resources are starting to run low, and Russia's on his knees, begging for this to stop. Yeah, Cavalry archers doing their best yeah. to block, and yeah, jeez, we called. Congratulations, boys. Holy oh, shit. I, I thought of... Water Dancer just do so much more there, but um, apparently not. I can't I can't remember if Water Dance got turned down a bit. I think... Or has it got turned down... Has it got turned down the latest patch, but these boys play on the last patch. This is still pre-native um, water rework. Um, I was looking at the chat part of this, and people were saying whether the amount of changes is it good for the game or not for the game, but you can start to lose track of what's changed, when's changed, and it's not its not like, oh, this is what's been changed from RE. It's like some some things in the game have been changed like three or four times, and I was like, oh, what's the state yeah. of a Sue TP now? I <laughs> absolutely <laughs> lost it. But, um, yeah, as Aztec's one of the stronger water sieves, but uh, India's probably the strongest anti water sieve there. True, yeah. It's like the castles on the hill, he's on the shore. And it, it's great, it's like, cool rings are like, you know, so slow in melee, but I mean, um, in uh, bombard mode. But the Ellie's just not having to unpack, it's just ridiculous. Like, they, they can, you know, um, charge up to the coast, they can pull back, they don't have to, you know, take any fire from uh, ships. So, um, yeah, definitely, definitely good. I'll check out the military in the timeline here. 67 for life, I love it. Um, Units killed. Shit. Shit. Perez with a 3 to 1 KD. My god. And same with these. Look at those KDs, Harris. Holy <laughs> crap. 2 to 1. Well, 2 to I, 1. I was, that, that, that shouldn't be surprising because we're talking about mace horses and strats on one side and sea poison and oh, the yeah, on the other. Like, it's. it's the, the numbers doesn't mean too much, but if you do the jailed thing, oh, jailed, go to the experience, look at the combat experience, that will tell you all the stories you need to know. He sweared by that metric. He loved that metric. Um, but yeah, Lafidi's on strikes is one of those just matchups. You're like, oh, I don't really want to be Russia there. I don't actually know how Russia beats House in the 1v1 just regularly. It's That must be one of those matchups that's starting to get a bit awkward. Um, Tit on the age up there to the third age, having to defend hard. He was, he was, he was under pressure there from that moment in time. I do remember... He was having to defend. He just wasn't training mm -hmm. villagers as much, and then lost seven villes. So he was just kind of always behind, and that gap between Perez and it—it it was always increasing, always increasing. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, but congratulations, always taking the series one-one. Um, we'll head into the next game. Hey, what? In just a sec. What? <laughs> he's taken the series. It's over. Oh, no, he's, he's, he's taken it two-one-one. Sorry. Oh, right. He's even to doubt. He's even to doubt. Taking the series, you know, no, yeah, it's not taking the series. Um, forced to have it, but uh, we'll get into the next one in just a second, folks. We'll switch that over. I'm so confused by this MFD chat. There's a guy called MMFD, even. I have no idea. I don't <laughs> no. know what the origins is, of that are. Is, is, is MMFD the new copy and pasta for this I think it's um, the new copy and pasta. thing? Yeah. I will pause this one. There you go. I'll clearly get the prediction going and the sieve selections here. So what do we just see? Canisian tits with Azzy. I'll just just get Shaman to do predictions and Yeah. Well, pre GK, you, can you do predictions you, for us, pretty please? What do you I, I always I always love it like when like everyone's like, oh let's do predictions. I'm like, I don't 
really care about predictions. It's just pixie points. It's not like you can actual material value from the predictions. Like we're not actually encouraging gambling. Or maybe Josh is, but uh, I'll just say just. Yeah, because well, then you when you when you actually get when you actually get sad if your man loses, like oh I've just lost some points, and it's like oh I've just ruined my day. So we're gonna see <laughs> in game three here, Izad with Brits and Perez with Azzy. Interesting, interesting. And then we're gonna see Kinesi and Tit with the Otto Dutch turtling potential. Did somebody say the Dutch? Alright, so let's get right into this one here. Brilliant. Let's kick it off. On Punjab. You can see Tit as the Dutch spot. Oh on my the right god, Josh. What? Josh, what? It's, what? Pronounced, it's, it's pronounced Punjab. It's not Punjab. The YouTube comments will rip you for it. Punjab. They'll get annoyed if you, you didn't call it Punjab. Oh no, I always, I always used to love going over like YouTube comments and people say like, Oh my god, you said my, it, my, you said my province wrong. How dare you? I'm like, yeah, I, do I give too I much? <laughs> No, nah, not at all. Right, do you want to introduce the players where they're spawning? I think, or I should think I do that one? Okay, well, uh, Kinesi uh, going to be spawning in the bottom. Uh, going to be great for him. He's going to have not... I feel like every time I spawn on this map, I'm like, I, I'm praying as Otto, don't get the top spawn, don't get the top spawn, don't get the top spawn. Because <laughs> the TP line on the bottom is just so much easier. It saves so much walk time as well. Um, and we're going to see uh, Dutch on the northern side of the map. Uh... Oof. I feel like this is going to be good because if Otto does get pushed at the bottom, he can always get some uh, uh, TCs up at the top side of the map. And uh, having his eco diversified means if you know if he's going to be hit hard in one spot, not a lot of vitals are going to. No, there's not going to be a lot of vitals present. Um, I think they're going to fight over this hundred food here, but uh, we'll quickly check out um, Perez's start. Uh, no deck quite yet, but uh, going to be spawning next to the trade route maybe. Three TP shipment, we'll be able to claim the center to and the native post at the top. Who's got the result of this treasure? Tid gonna come ahead there. Um, definitely gonna help out Dutch um, for 100 food. Uh, not gonna... I feel like they don't really idle much, do they, though, anyway, in age, in age one, um, if macro correctly. And uh, we'll check out Izad's Brits at the moment. Uh, gonna be opting for three bills first. No one Virginia company. Rangers, maybe, Harrison? Um, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I want to see it. We I, I've, I've, I've never seen I it. Still haven't, I still haven't seen Rangers uh, being in play, because the, the other thing is, Rangers are pretty decent versus heavy infantry, but not as great versus skirmishers, and versus a Civ combo like Otto, Dutch, I feel you'd rather have longbows than Rangers. Uh, if if Otto does go for Janissaries, then you've got Perez there for the Mace Altons, and Janissaries are not great versus Cavalry as well, so either could just fill Cavalry player role. It's hard to say in that sense, but um, I don't, I don't, let's put it this way, I don't expect like H2 range to from the advanced mm. church opening there. Yeah. Check out Thatcher's deck at the moment. Looks pretty, looks pretty standard, at least from my point of view. Does have an extra uh, so no, like I don't like it. I don't like it. He's got no 700 food, 700 gold, or four vills. Now, I'm not saying you need all of those cards, but having I'd you kind of you kind of yeah, you, you kind of you kind of need 700 food or 700 gold. And in the Dutch um, games, I would prefer 700 food because 700 gold when you send it and collect it, chances are you always overgather for your age up. So I mean, gold can be used for training larger batches of skirm than hus age two. I don't think he needs three mill cards, mm. but I appreciate. I appreciate no Royal Mint. That's a that's a mistake I see a lot of players make is is having Royal Mints in your deck thinking are you actually gonna be putting villages on plantations when you've got banks and factories? Yeah. Just, just have your bills on the wood and food instead. Never need to make a plantation as Dutch, it's just not part of the Dutch vocabulary's plantation. Yeah, true true. I'll check out uh oh, it's a bit sick. we'll check out um Ali deck at the moment. Uh triple um farm techs as well. Oh, sorry, four farm techs, and looks like we're going to be seeing some Eagle Runner Knight play. Um, definitely stacked. Um, 
happily in its favour there. We're going to see Harris in your favourite card, Team Capulli. No, 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 no. My, 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 my favourite card is Pioneers. Every villager needs their great coats, and, they, and when, once they have great coats, they need their Pioneers. French build rush, maybe. <laughs> um, interesting. He's going to send um, Carl Kamak. Did that come in before the age up? Did you see? No. Before, you know, I mean, he's already sending it, so. Does it not, does it not affect the current age up? It it does, but I'm interested if if it, if it arrived before the age up got queued. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it, no age up in queue. No, you should. Does it not affect while it's been tacked? Or because quite a lot. Yeah, no, it doesn't quite affect a lot, it. Cause, it's all yeah, because quite a Yeah, because quite a lot of these other cards they, they do it while researching, like Virginia State Assembly. Yeah, that one there, that that tech it affects during age up as well, which I find very confusing. I don't. That's something I've never liked affecting. I've never liked cards arriving fast. I've never liked um, kind of rates of research being affected while they're being researched because it doesn't ha it doesn't happen with artillery training, infantry training, artillery production from the factories. It's just it's just one of those things. It's, it's your next thing always gets speeds up, but it just seems for some reason it's age up's like special uh, consideration there. And it's just and it's um, when things. It's a big it's building, I suppose. No, but but it costs three hundred wood to build, so it should only produce a hundred and I don't, I don't know how much it should. Be. It doesn't. It shouldn't produce three XP, XP. Let's put it that way. It's mm -hmm. just one of those weird ones. Just real quick, Harrison. Uh, if we notice yep. that uh, Perez is going to opt for a warrior priest boom. Sent uh, three warrior priests as his first age two card, and it's going to be batching out the warrior priest from the plaza. But he did scout the double racks from Otto. Do you reckon it's a bit greedy, or is he, is he, do you reckon he can pull it off, like, going for the early boom? Uh, he's, he's got he's got infinite uh, warriors. He's got very tanky warrior priests as well. He's got defensive war hut. He's got Izad here to offer support. Chances are he's going infantry. Yeah, musketeer, so maybe a couple musks, musks a couple longbows. Yeah. But um, I, I, I feel, actually, as long as he doesn't overdo it, he's got one more warrior priest coming out now, but he will switch over very, very soon. And the villagers there helping up with the um, uh, warriors. When, when a warrior gets killed, doesn't give any XP. He's on the warrior dance now, and the, this the spam of just endless infantry units for free is, has begun. They take a whole ball. They are 200 HP to start off with, aren't they? they? They do decrease, but they are they are essentially strong vet masks. Oh at, my god! When this they guy. Get to he took over 20 bloody bullets to the mm. head and he's still standing. And another, he's on 1 HP! <laughs> you can see how they're trying to ignore the um, warriors, but as soon as one goes down, another gets spawned. Yeah. The warrior priest is happy to stand there. This, this double rack's jam push with skirms, so scary, has just been defeated by a by fire pit priests. and an explorer. <laughs> like, it's. You're like, Dance to oh save my the God. town! Sending team three bills now because he's a top lad instead of a, maybe like nine mace options, which probably would have been the smarter card to send at this moment in time. Oh my god, Perez, you greedy fuck up. Oh my god. Yeah, I, I would I would say that the nine maces would have blocked his um population for warriors, but uh, not see warriors free population if currently. They just keep on spamming mm. until they just die. They're just like fuck this, we're gonna hit Brit. <laughs> I'm not pushing into that that plaza. He's going to pick up a few bills here as well. I really like the three huts card here from Otto. It's a really add, nice added dimension. Something to snare the armies. The longbow's now being snared. They can't escape too much. The giants can move in. Hustle, and the thing is, if you, yeah, if you don't, if you're not killing the huts, they're snaring your army. If you, if you are killing the huts, that's you're not killing the giants. And giants exactly. are the damage dealers here. Been, and so, the so, minute are going to get picked off as well. Oh, but yeah, the last one on top doesn't really matter at the end of the day. No, no, no you see, ignore the minute, man. It, it feels so weird that you have to ignore six units with 26 attack. Really strong units, but it's, it's not the minute you want to kill. It's the other stuff. It's the warrior priests, it's the villagers, it's the longbows, it's the stuff which isn't 
<laughs> you look at the warrior priest. Look at Ham on the skirms. Like, get out of town. Come here, bitch. <laughs> Boof. <laughs> the, yeah, the, th the thing is with priests, they have, they have high HP, but they're not a class as any units, but, so they don't get countered by skirms, but they also don't get they also don't get countered by falconets, and it's, it's I I'm still thankful that the like a uh, house of five priestess meta hasn't developed because that card it feels to me it feels insane that they can just convert units, resist falconet shots, can just tank so much. So it's like, it's like if you if you shoot them, you're not killing house's army. Mm -hmm. If you don't shoot them and kill house's army, you just lose your army to conversions. It's it's a it's a, it's a funny old unit that is. Mm. Gonna send Coyotes here and chase down the rest of the skirms. I feel like that's such a oh, play. Oh, what a play! What that's a play! So what a play! Yeah, great. That's loving it. And we Split keep on talking about. Good, though. Yeah, we we keep on talking about divide and conquer in these two v two. So if you can split your opponents up, you're gonna get so much better of a return of investment. Um, Pit's job here. Aiken's job was to keep the Jans covered from other heavy infantry, like musketeers, pumas, mm. trade with longbows and maces. But the fact that he had to kind of go down through Asic space, and I assume that all of Jans from Kinesi went topside just got cleaned up. Like the score difference between the two teams is already opening up, and that's just easier playing as the Brits. But um, yeah, Perez has still got the Warrior Priest. He's not short on Warriors to produce some Warrior Priests to He's produce. He's getting them as well. Oh, he switched over to Warrior Priest, but he was getting 11 XP a second. Isn't um, trade post like two and a half or something? I didn't post two and a half XP per second. Are you mad? Well, what is it? Are you mad? What is it? One flat. It's oh, one okay. XP flat. If it was 2.5, we'll be in an uber trade meta meta. <laughs> so oh, he's literally, he's that, literally yeah. got 11 trade posts worth right there. Oh. Worth of XP. That's insane. Gonna send the Kyrie runners for, for a raid now. I feel like that's a good play. Like, it, He's in a comfortable position where he doesn't need them at, at home base anymore. They're not going to push in, and he can't. There's enough jam mass where he can't push out onto the skirms. Although Harrison, they are split up. Like you said, dividing counter the Janissaries is going to get picked off here by the longbow and the musk. Oh, this is really awkward positioning now here for Tinis. It's just this. This game hasn't got off to the great greatest of starts, and now starting to feel really awkward. The skirms are switching to longbows, and longbows are better units than skirmishers in. in the, that war between the two units, the longbows just trade very, very well. Skirm had a couple more of them, but uh, it's it's the other units, the Jans, have had to move away. And now the Explorer's back in, full HP, danced up. Can go to cover mode to fully tank, we'll just keep on chasing and get the snare in, and Skirm just can't move. Coyote combat coming in here for Perez, so suggesting he's going to main Coyote and just continue to spam them. He's actually even aged at this moment in time. He can do. Isa can do whatever he likes. He's going to be the player dictating the rest of the game, I feel. He actually is ages. I feel like if he can chuck a town center at the top here, you know, secure all that natural res. The four base is going to go down. I don't know, we'll be taking the TP line, but I feel like, yeah, it's not, it's not going to be in comparison to Azzy and Brit Eco at the moment. Oh. If, you, if any of you at home are always are just are feeling a bit down by Age of Empires gameplay and just need a bit of a pick-me-up, just just remember that we have one of the best players in the game. Kinesi has gone for a double rack Jan rush in a tournament environment. Like, even the best pull out like the PR20 strats of double rack Jans. It's, it's, it's strong and effective. It's so You're simple. You're insulting the PR20? Jesus. Oh, yeah. I mean, That's a bit rich. Yeah. The, the PR20 gang and RE are a special gang, like, filled with special people, and that was a club that I was part of once, and on some days, still am. <laughs> uh, how do they come back from this? Do they boom themselves, or do they keep playing pressure? What, Kinesi 2? Yeah. Um, uh, Kinesi's, got stop, Kinesi's basically got to stop making jazz. He's got to have enough jazz to combat any um, cavalry threat is the skirm's gonna be trading both sieves can get up but they're not they shouldn't get up together and yeah the coach has gone to the skirms here and the thing is because they're, they're not the same unit units from the same sieve they actually block each other and try and move out of the way I actually send in eight pikes here from tit as well which i'm not too sure really wanted that they're still committing to this full age too that is some husks here from dutch as well no inch this is strange because we've got pikes being sent here from Tit, forcing the push, but actually have also agent behind, so it's a bit of a mismatch on what they want to do. 
And uh, now EZ's up to next stage, that town center's up. Yeah, if Kinesi can drop down, you know, some town centers, research the faster train techs, and kind of go for more of the build orientation, Otto is one of those who can just outscale the game. And recently, we do see Otto usually have the most eco in these team games, which is find it kind of interesting. Uh, Tit score is pretty good. He's playing Dutch and has options to just add to banks to just increase the eco at that moment in time. But this extra last like minute or two minutes of just trying to continue this age two push has really hurt them, I feel, because he's as untouched, he's unchallenged, and he's into the third age with great eco, more eco with the, the town to age up. Can get the tax in now and can really push his advantage. And uh, raid topside coyotes on goldmine. Oh, I feel like that's a game. <laughs> Has he got his great coats? Has he got his great coats? I don't think he. He doesn't. No great coat. Ah. Oh. What's no. the count going down there? That's got to be like seven, eight. Oh, I'm gonna spam bad. my. I'm gonna spam my rip and no great coats on most. Okay. Oh. Oh. <laughs> The thing is, the Dutch usually have a market as well. It's just one of those, it's just as Dutch, it's get your hunting dogs and then get your great coats and then. Oh, he doesn't have a market, does he? He's he got aggressive. Market out. How, do you, how, do you, how do you play Dutch without a market? 13 minutes. Oh, that's so. This guy. To be oh, fair, I mean, if. Um, yeah. If. Uh, if yeah, so, so that Ville would have been dead if it wasn't great coats. He had great coats. He's had was so smart and sensible and should be applauded. <laughs> Alright, two fives coming out now um, from Ezad. We'll be able to siege back this uh, barracks here from um, Kinesi. I feel like Kinesi needs to get his um, as Otto. He, he's up. Do you reckon? Yeah, he's got two fives. I feel like a thousand wood now. I reckon they can hold. They're not going to be able to push in. I'd go a thousand wood, chuck a town center down here, or maybe. Up yeah, the I mean, he, he's not going to send an eight Jans because extra Jans here is not really going to add to him. He's got to win the foul call. This is huge. It's, oh, he's taking a shot onto the longbows, but he's actually out of range of the foul connect, so He's kind of he's trying to bait the foul connect exchange, but Ooh. actually, they're, they're in the range. He's chasing. He's looking for it. He's like pulling back. The Jans actually level dropping going on here. The longbow, Jesus. So yeah, yeah. Long, longbows are really bad versus heavy infantry, especially versus Jans. Got so much HP. And actually the Jans now going to go in and force the exchange, but uh, the shot goes on. Ooh. Yeah, oh, the shot, the shot goes onto the skirmishers. Oh, he's down. I, mean, I, can't, I, can't even un I can't even understate the micro there from Kinesi. That was, that was great, because he's had to turn around for a shot on the skirmishers while the, the Falcons were snared mm. by the Jans tanking the longbows, and Kinesi could actually get his Falcons caught up in the range to take the shot and take the trade. So Kinesi now is able to go for an eco shipment. He's bought himself that time in pressure. Uh, nice way Cody is in the, in the base. Uh, I think all of Dutch's eco is in the town centre at the moment because of this raid. Check how many villas in the town centre? Can you check that? Ah, uh, some villas forward. Oh, yeah, there's only, I think yeah, there's only six. Yeah, there's only six in there. That's not too bad. Twenty-five villas is okay. Uh, for this time, you probably want you probably want more than twenty-five. Like me, like. 29.30, but uh, he might only have three banks as well. It's not an ideal position here for the Dutch player. And uh, Izad honestly could go in uh, industrial. Infantry Taking combat, that's, infantry that's combat. That standard stuff. Yeah, you, you, you can play the skirm. The town center's coming in from Otto. Oh, it's I feel if, I, yeah, I about to say, I feel if you're going town center card first, you probably don't have time for the 1k wood afters. He's already building one town center and he's got enough gold to buy three clicks of wood for his fourth town center. Unless yeah. you're going for four town centers, the town center wagon itself just isn't going to pay off. Well, he's it, he's it, already started to build but, one, so yeah. yeah. And here come that, the warriors, yeah. slowly streaming in, being as annoying as ever. They must Britain be the top just completely uncontested at the top here as well. We could have a conversation about what is the top ten most annoying units in Age of Empires Three. I've, I've actually a really good conversation because it'd be hard to narrow it down. <laughs> Fire and, elephant. And, but but, but in, re in recent times, the uh, native warrior is starting to get really annoying. But is it is it because it's the native warrior's annoying, or is it the Aztec war chief is annoying? They they are both annoying for different reasons. 
I've always wondered, Harrison, can you explain to me, you know how much sometimes the, um, the warrior, um, what's it called? Warrior guy, the explorer, um, sometimes, like, wakes up when he's danced back to life from the front, and sometimes he wakes up from the plaza. What's, like, the, how is, how is that logic done? Um, alright, I, 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 okay, so... If the war, if the war, if the war chief revive dance completes, he goes back to the war fire pit before HP. Yeah. If if the explorer gets ten percent of his HP back from natural regen and wakes up, he's then under war chief HP dance and gets the war chief HP bonus. So he's still at roughly about ten percent in terms of percentage, I think. But instead of having like two hundred, he now has like five hundred HP or seven hundred HP mm. due to the the scaling from the fire pit of the HP bonus. I think that's what it is. If you get that, kind of, kind of. You get that, you kind, of, kind of, yeah, yeah. So, 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 the dance is either revive a dance or increase HP dance when your explorer is up. So it's kind of roll the dice, which one happens first. Interesting the switch to uh, Eagle Runner Knights. I feel like that's a fair, that's a fair play here. Um, the hus switch from uh, Otto could be pretty bad, but I mean the amount of the amount of musk and the amount of eagle runner nice here just basically locks that down. He's he's locked into Jan's potentially Avis, maybe. Do you wanna see do you wanna see a good play? On the north side of the map, Perez is either put some buildings or some units on top of Hunts. He's just having line of sight on the top side yeah, and he just the... knows Tony's. he knows that if any Dutch Hills go out there he's just gonna just move the units over and just pick them off. Some yeah. smart play. Because he doesn't need them in the fight, you know. Oh, Brit is just so strong. Oh, and the GG's GG. beautiful. Yeah, look at the score from Aiken. He's he's under half score, nearly half score of Izad. And we, we talk about now that British can up, they can do what they want, pushing, dictating the tempo. And if he's just going pure vet longbows, the skirms will never win. He's going Reuters as well to cover potential Coyote raiding threat. He just, they just haven't got enough and they're just losing. They like, haven't, haven't sent a fault. To hold on is is a sign that you're just playing on the back foot and mm. the scaling there from Brit afterwards will just continue. Uh, Gigi's been called. Uh, the score is the score two is one. Two one. Oh, it's two one. Oh, it's, oh, is, that only, is that only the third game? Yeah, yeah. Could be here for a long time. Could they? Could they? We we don't know. We don't know. It could be over next game. Could be over the game after. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, but we'll check out next game. Yeah. Next game's gonna last seven minutes tops. <laughs> All in rush. All in house rush. House of Ethiopia, maybe from either other player. Oh, what's what's the strat? Is it like desert? What's it called? The Desert Raider Tower Rush. I haven't seen oh, that in ages. That, that 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 destroyed Quick Search for a whole month. <laughs> a whole month. A whole month. You just couldn't play Age of Empires three because of that crap. Mm. Yeah, we'll check out the uh, res as well here. Yeah. Just yeah, like skyrocketing away from Brits, um, he said, getting uh, all the market techs and just the absolute map control on the top of the map there. Oh, check out the little, yeah, look at that. Just peeling away. Luckily, we haven't got anything quite as ex extreme as that in current meta. However, the new Lakota fast agents, early four axe riders, like with, with the early TP start and some maybe some good treasures. Uh, you can age up 14 vil, even just to lay your final villager, eat some livestock. A 14 vil messenger age up into early four axes. You can have axe riders in your opponent's base, maybe 415 on the 14 vil, 430 on the mm -hmm. 15 vil age up. And quite a lot of civs age up at that time, trying to drop down their first defensive building. And just, it's, it's, it's just, it's just, in, it's tilting. It's not more than annoying. It's tilting at the moment, <laughs> and that it just it just reminds me when you said the house of Raider Rush. I'm like, please don't. Mm. It brings back dark memories of a dark time for Age Empires Three. Yeah, I, I honestly I got I got to be honest, Harrison. I know I'd like your thoughts on this as well, but the upcome you know the you know the Night nice Mediterranean that got released right. Compared that to the African oh, sorry, Royals. Sorry, sorry. Say that, say that again, please. Um, the night. Oh wait, it's my microphone. Yeah, okay. Um, the compared to the Knights of the Mediterranean DLC, um, not, yeah. The African Royals, like I feel like when the African Royals got out, like the balance was just completely whack. But for the Knights of the Mediterranean, I think they've definitely it's not perfect, but they definitely reeled it in a lot. 
um, as a DLC, like you know, Italy and Malta. Ah, uh, well, okay. So, 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 I mean, Italy and Italy and Malta, in terms of design, I really like. In terms of balance, it is there. If anything, some improvements can be made in the sense that they're potentially underperforming. I don't think Malta is the greatest team Civ going, but uh, they're certainly undiscovered, and that's all fine. The real oh, kind tell of that, tell that to Jack and Seven Apples. I hope I hope they're um, up now. I, I mean, Sorry, continue, I, I'm, continue. Not team, I'm not the team player, but I think the real concern at the moment is the natives and the maps. One mm. thing I've noticed with the European maps is that there's so many XP treasures everywhere. They're littered everywhere. And to the point that you can always be like an extra shipment ahead. You can always squeeze in that extra shipment. You can always have that. And some people's, some Civ's builds can, can really exaggerate. If anybody wants to look at a good video on Callan's um, Twitch, he was reviewing a game where he basically got, he lost to an Inca player, to an Inca Nat Rush with the House of Bourbon and the House of maybe Wetin, something like that, or the, the other the one. What the hell of, do they do? <laughs> house, house of Fanar? I don't know. A anyway, so, I think yeah, I think it's the House of Fanar, so you got um, mounted infantry and royal musketeers on the native treaties, but then once the Oh, I, I, I don't know what the natives... The natives actually doesn't matter, but it's the big buttons came in. They clicked the free big button tech, and he got a Magia Hassan age 2, and then four Sacred Band oh. infantry in age 2 as well from the other TP. And poor poor Callan's just trying to play Japan, like trying to play a normal Civ. He just sees like, all me this alone. shit. <laughs> and, and, and he's like, why is there Zapotec Lightning? There is no Zapotecs on this map. Why does Inca have <laughs> Zapotec Lightnings? That is... That, that design of a card speaking is the Inca and that Americans in age one is for me I feel like one of the worst design cards because having natives when it's not actually in that map just because it goes against the design of what a native is mm. you know it's really weird and you, and you can train them like if you ship them cool You've got some mercenaries coming in but if you can train them as well it's really strange I, oh I could be talking for five hours on things I'd change but uh, that's not the purpose today we we're here to celebrate the amazing tournament and the amazing team play between these two players in the gold semi-finals. Best of five, match point. Can Ezan and Perez do it for this one? Or will Tip Kinesi bring it back level square into the final game? If if they do that, it will be the final game. It's the best of five. You know what I mean? Yeah. We don't, we don't know. We don't know. We'll have to wait and see. But no. um, next game, I mean, I mean, I, I, mean I, don't, I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I actually don't know either. I think. Hey, hey, um, can you hear the the sound alerts over on your end, Harrison, or is it just me? Uh, what 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 type of sound alerts? Oh, okay, then you can because <laughs> like there's these sound alerts that that that's chat keeps playing when we like say stuff, and it's just perfectly balanced. Oh, like you know oh, the dun 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 one. So I don't know who, who oh, redeemed it. Someone I'm, just I'm, 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 sh I'm sure whoever's managing the royal clan. Um, Twitch can temporarily turn off those things if they want to, because that would could get quite annoying very quickly. I imagine you get just someone spamming five bits with the most annoying sound sounds possible. Um, but anyway, getting into game four here, we have um, Izad and Perez opening with Sweden. Interesting on Deccan as well. Uh, so I'll just get that. Sweden, China, Sweden, China. And uh, Kinesi and Tit are going to be going French Brits. Uh, uneasy France Brit Alliance here. But a good Civ combo, both desiring map control. So uh, we don't have like a Boom Civ and a Turtle mm -hmm. Civ matched up, which is good. Uh, so we'll get into that in just a sec, I reckon. Uh, switch this over. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All set to go let's uh let's get into it so at the top of the um i'm sorry on the left hand side of the map we have Izad, Izad and perez uh spawning in gonna be getting some wood treasures in base but gonna be starting with all these extra crates i feel like uh that's a lot of torps that's definitely a lot of torps and um gonna maximize is it northern refugees is that the age one card um for the extra, yes, extra so yeah so perez here playing as the oh where is it? where's explorer going uh, where, okay, so so Paris is playing as the as the Chinese. They have northern mm. refugees, which if you drop down villages, it's a villager for every village. So on a map like Deccan, you can drop down a market, gather the gold, buy some extra wood, go that way. But I feel that China wants a trading post. Realistically, it's just it's a simple benefit strongly. One, I know. I'm surprised. He does have a disciple to get 
yaks as well, so he's not missing out completely on the yak war. Mm. And that so, way, then Perez can go into um, TDs. But I think Perez here is just going to go for four villages, age one maybe, and try and get like a five vil card or play like that. So we'll have to see. Um, either playing as the Swedes, I would like to see some good communication between these two players. I would honestly, I want to see Sweden torp China's in base gold mine because China oh. does not need 5k gold mine in age two. True, true. And that's. And that is safe gold, because what you don't want is torping the middle islands or trying to torp the sides and getting destroyed. You don't really want to be re rebuilding torps once you've built them. And if Sweden can get a full torp boom off, they become so strong. They're one of the strongest um, civs in team at the moment. Um, contrary, we have Kinesi Tit. Uh, Kinesi dropping down his second trading post in age one here is the French. So <laughs> you can kind of see how... Some players are here going for the training post met, um, agenda, some people just not. Even Tit not going for training post, that could be a TP into a Virginia, um, Threeville Virginia company, Will, while still having all his extra wood available and gold, but he's, he's not. So, interesting strategies on the camp. It's a very <gasps> oh my god, we're going to see it, Harrison, Harrison, the grenade is, we're going to see, look, 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 grenade launchers, improved grenades, I never thought I'd see the day. Oh, it, it does say 2v2 musketeers, really. Grenadiers are like a byproduct. No, I wanted to see the grenaders. <laughs> Honestly, but like when, when D like, first came out. Versus, yeah. yeah, Grenadiers versus China and Sweden is actually one of those safe combos. Actually, I think Grenadiers can do very, very well. Um, likely, Perez will go Skirm Sword in age 3. Either that will go Artillery Musketeer. So actually, yeah. the Grenadiers will do very well versus all of them. True, so. true, yeah. Good call. Interesting, but yeah, definitely uh, sort of mid to late game orientated decks here. Um, I feel like we're going to see a, a really good match. I feel like we're not going to see like a slugger match, you know, with like a ton of walls and shit, but we're going to definitely see some uh, mid-map fights. Um, I, I, in my opinion, I don't know, I probably have missed something, but I don't think we're going to see either side, you know, one going defensive, one going really offensive, like, you know, a bit of a siege sort of style gameplay. We're going to see, you know, some open map battles. Um, definitely taking some good trades. Who comes ahead on micro while... Well, you know, balancing your macro. Let me check, has any, has any Civ gone for an Age 1 market? Because I feel that Age 1 market with voice extra gold grades France. is just a go that you must do so. Yeah, the market there, he bought he bought the extra wood there for the train post, a market there for hunting dogs, and bought an extra for the a manor house. There are a couple of manor houses in the mid-map there for Tit on the plateau, mm -hmm. so I think that's map control awareness already, which is nice to see. It's just China I'm a bit confused, really, by... Can we look at China's base and see what yeah, he does have. He only went one. 80... He's, he's, so he's only got seventeen oh, no, bills. I'm so blind, bloody hell. No, no, no. I, I, okay. This is hard because my my China timings and villages are way off on Dakang's extra crates. I I assume he's got a full villager card, but I I wouldn't be surprised yeah, if he, he if he miss, if he if he missed one of those bills coming in. He's on... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, we can just count and see, but it doesn't work because it's Deccan. <laughs> yeah. And, and and you can drop the wand at any time. You know what I mean? So it's, mm. it's, it's, I feel that he should have an extra villager here. I feel that 18 at this time, yeah. with a four villager shipment, he should, he should be at more. But... Might not be. Doesn't matter too much. Interesting. So you got the yeah, market come. Like, got... Yeah. Market coming up. Yeah, got so you've got the market coming in now. I'd like to see maybe buy a click of wood to get that trading post down. Um, I suppose if he wants to age up, he doesn't need any more gold to send the 700 gold. But I think versus French and Brit and trying to protect your Sweden player, and getting a nice boom. Yeah, he's, he's dropping down a relax and he's looking to. I, it appears some early age two uh, militaries. Another proxy war coming out from Tid as well. Anti raids. Don't want the Corollian Suicide Squad's coming in. Do you reckon he's anti raid? Yeah. I think he's just trying to curtail the map from Torps, but you can't really true, Torp true. off the, the, the southern side due to that trading line, so that's really tough. But I'm, I'm sure. Yeah, look at the scout. There's a scout there from French. He sees the Torps mm. being built. The, the, the players are aware of Sweden's a potential and a booming options with the Torps and that, how they're going to maintain that. With Dutch banks, you can kind of let them slide and go, okay, well, that is just Dutch Zico, but is Sweden go full Torp, send in Blueberries, send in Engelberg, Ironworks? It just can't let that happen, unfortunately. It's, it's like that one scene just can't let it happen. Yeah. 
definitely looking like a bit of a heavy map control for Tin at the moment. Um, I wonder, do you reckon it's worth taking the bottom trade line as uh, Brutal Sweden at the moment, or do you just even, um, leave it for China or France to just come down and slowly build up on there? As 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 the Brits, I think you can. As Sweden, I don't. I don't think you can. I, I don't think you'll be allowed you need to. Need the wood for Because yeah. they, they they know the top set. If, if they start seeing that the TPI being taken, that's just too much investment. That's just too greedy. Hmm. And yeah, one one Hussar coming down to the south side to try and pick off top bills. But unfortunately, the top's already built. Um, but but we'll get because the yeah, you get one bill. He's actually topped the far right mine on the bottom side as well. Oof. So there's at least 10 top on the southern side. Like, is that is... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's a strong monk throwing the cliffs up. He's already got 10 tops on the southern side. Yeah. He's got a couple of tops in base. He's... Oh, he's even, top he even, 120. He escaped one to the north here, and so he's even getting that back mine as well. To the east, not north. <laughs> but yeah, um... Uh, I, I think Izad's looking to be fine. So Tit is keeping map control. He wants all the hunts in the middle map and he'll be able to last a long, long time. I like how Izad and Perez are having some sort of map pressure. They're not just trying to do their boom or just Izad just trying to fully focus on, on Eco. He's trying to force a reaction here from the French and British. I haven't seen too much here from France, so maybe he's just doing cav raids and going to the third age. Just do cav raids going to China's base now, but that's uh not the main city to rage, it's all the villages you can defend. Uh, China's base, there is a cab raid. Ooh. Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll pick up this one though. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's going down. Oh, look at the pole, look at the pole. <laughs> he's trying. <laughs> Pikeman nearby, actually. No way he, he saves this. No way he's... He saves it. Nice. Oh, yeah. God. Already on 140 pop as well. They're doing pretty good, doing pretty good to be fair. Um, I'll check out um, Tits pop as well, 180. Yeah, those, that long one map is going to become pretty deadly. And But he doesn't have Yeoman? Yeah, he doesn't have Yeoman, so he's going to have to switch out of it. But he's, I reckon he's, he's just going to chuck it in. He, he knows there's not much husk coming out here from China, Sweden, so um, definitely a safe bet to go long for the game. Um, check out if anyone's. Kinesi's already clicked up, gonna be batching goons. Steppy coming in from Perez, you're gonna to commit to H2 here. Um, Fritz gonna to commit to H2, yeah, I feel like doing Longbow, you know. Harrison, that's a pretty good uh, H2, sorry, early game combo. It is, uh, I, I don't like Perez here sending in seven step riders after he sees that Kinesi has reached the third age there. Mm -hmm. Unless those step riders are, well, I mean, it's, they're not on top control because he's actually on the same team as the Swedish player. So I'm unsure what the role of these step riders will be used. He's going to probably send him to the north side to try and do some raiding. Mm. It's all fine, but uh, leftover Huss would deal with that. Uh, to me, that feels like a, not, not a nothing shipment, but not... The shipment he required at that moment in time, but oh, nice little cheeky hush raid there being annoying. Um, so the fact that Sweden's managed to talk the southern side of the map and still unchallenged here from Kinesi is, is quite. I'm not, not going to use the word incredible, but uh, that is something that the British player would love to try and kind of curtail. Uh, all the gold mines behind Sweden's base still not yet taken up, and that's, that just buys just longevity here for the Swedish eco. and. Maybe at a later point he might delete delete forward talks from ex the exhausted mines and talk the back mines mm. or some sort of play. Is the is it's just the ones in base that are gold, right? Yeah, it's only yeah. it's only in base ones. Yeah, but the things like with China would we'll never go for that five game gold mine in uh, the, in the near term. Mm. You have the porcelain tower to help out with the gold as well in the third day. I go top side. China's pushing. Um, French player We've got the step rise pulling pressure onto the thing. But here come the dragoons. I think that's a. I don't actually think that's a five goon shipment and a five goon trail. I think it's just two no. batches of goons trained organically. No, yeah, it's just two yeah, no. batches. And that's a shipment down the drain. The stepping riders didn't really accomplish anything, did they? No. Like, they didn't really force the goons. The goons were coming out anyway, and they didn't really get any bills, so... I, I, oh, I think, picked I think up a one. couple... They got one, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think a couple batches of infantry here from China was a nice idea to kind of ensure that they both wouldn't get double right-clicked by... 
you know, British and the French while Sweden's trying to boom. But yeah. you can't just stay in age two as China. China needs to go to the third age because the Wanda is so strong. You can get a second uh, town center at some point as well. Um, you can spend your exp export on better <laughs> things than what you can in age two. Yeah, so, so that Porcelain Tower will come up, but at the moment he's got an army of colonial units which he doesn't, he doesn't want to trade off and fight. He wants Ooh. to upgrade them because there's actually enough units to upgrade. Oh! The vault, yeah, the... That, villi that villager survived because of... Um, that, that villager should have died still. So he's great got coats. he's got great coats. Oh, wait, what's great it called? Coats, might, East got, yeah. I about to say he's got, I about to say he's got yeah, a great concert as well, but that's, no, he hasn't got a concert just yet. But that was a, that was really satisfying to watch. I love that the uh, rebounding volley off the bills just did so much damage, a decent amount of damage to the Chico now at least. That looks a bit, a few of them are one HP now. We can take out this house, this village as well. So, so this is one thing like I, I'm a bit not s fully comfortable with Perez's build. If he did the um, age one TP, go gone village into tea leaves, could have had a block house down. Um, so, and, or have the consulate maybe spend having the faster train villagers or maybe transition to maybe a German consulate or a Brit consulate. Yeah. But he could be training more, he could be training hand as soon as he ages up here to deal with the falconets. He does have Sweden here with two falconets to help win the war, but there's so much reliance here that Ezad's going to win the falconet trade. If he doesn't win the falconet trade, then that's really tough here for China and Sweden because they've, they've all got full infantry and just a couple extra falconet shots. That musk here, well, Brit's still in age two. He's only just clicked up, which is a bit awkward. We were hope, hoping he got up a little bit faster, especially with you know playing on a Dakan style map with extra res. He's got the bills behind it, yeah. And I feel like they're not under time pressure. Like they're they're, pu they're pushing in like now, but I feel like he's going to get the age up here. He's going to get his vet techs in. It's not going to like solve down that much, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's, 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 it's okay though, because Kinesi is just by in time being annoying at the top side. The entire army from Sweden and China's top side, while Brits finally doing something about the corps on the southern side. It's, mm. it's only a start, but it's, at least it's something. Um, Aiken with the f a full villager boom is absolutely fine. Any Ooh. houses which, which get taken down here by Sweden and China, they can rebuild elsewhere for some more villagers, which I think is more of an expensive trade. But it's certainly it's still fine. But he's aging up. He doesn't want to take a fight before he gets his vet musketeers. He doesn't want to take a fight before he upgrades his units. I think he should be communicating with um, Kinesi, but yeah. he, can only, he, can, he can only read prod, but don't take a full fight because there's so much potential. His first card, I reckon, would be Musk Combat as well. He's playing. Kinesi's playing with fire here. He's a good Ooh. player, but he's not, he's not the player known with the best micro in the world. That lock on there for me is that it's getting quite tense. But um Yeah, it's just it's just timings. Oh, oh, oh he sniped! He sniped! He sniped a, a Swedish Falk! Oh that's changed everything! You, you see the immediate switch. That, that one Falcon that goes down. Yeah. The, the, the Falk the crash, uh, is all so infantry. Now. It's all infantry. Go, 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 go! Pull back and another Falk volley. And that one Falcon. You can try and take shots on British musks, but overall it won't do too much because the two Falk in the back line there for Kinesi is putting on the damage. Uh, actually, yeah, Krassi is on the well. Falk. Falk's going down. He pulled his bit of cav, but um, well, infantry's clumped up. And yeah, the tr three true canoes getting on the top side. They're not even vet tech. They, they just realised they had the upper hand there like, um, so much and they just decided to just commit to the fight. Yeah, he, he, he needs to upgrade and wait for before he takes any significant trades now. We do see the vet Chukanus dude coming in the end. He's um uh, either sending in one of the Carolyn upgrades, probably the range one, but now that that exchange went quite favourably, they can carry on and it's the you know, the Brits, the strong eco save, they're the tempo save, they they take a while to get to the third age and that's when they're weak, but Hits got up, he's economically strong. He didn't lose his army during age up. Actually it was the other team who had Military setbacks, and now is the third age. We're going to see, yeah, Musk Combat Card One. He's actually gone Royal Mint Card Two here, which is um, somewhat interesting, but I'm sure it's absolutely fine because he's got lots of hunts. It's just me wants to speed up that coin income. And, um, You're right with the yeah, hammers as well fine. coming out um, age three to try and deal with those buffs. They're kind of forced to because you can't. 
Meech and Hammond's a great, but but in, in, a, in a team game, you just know there's so much stuff to block. There's so many goons as well. And if Perez has spent a card on seven seven hand mortars, and that's another kind of waste of a card. Immediately gets the village out again. <laughs> it's so funny. Yeah. Yeah. But um, needs must. Seven hand mortars out to deal with the two falconets when he lost when he had lost the falcon trade. And um yeah, Kinesi is ahead of score of the Swedish player, but it's more that Aiken is score lead is going very strong and you know French French free T C. China's still on one town center, it doesn't force him tower, but he's not really trying to expand that eco as much as he can. Yeah. And if this game goes as the game goes on, the position here from Aiken and Tits is just gonna increase. Izad's will be fine because he does have more mines and base to torp, but he, he, he lost those torps on the mines that tits on right there. He's losing southern control, and uh, the army split actually. We do see China go north side on his own, and Izad having to move south. And this is this is risky territory because China. I'm looking at his army now. I don't think he's got massive amounts of anti cav He does have you know he's got some swords in there, he's got some bikes, but <sighs> cav Karas with. Um, no, no, Cassiers, should I say, with um, Cav Combat, a bit of surround. We could see China wipe from the map very quickly here. Definitely. We'll be trying to push it under the town center. I wonder if there's any shipments coming out from. That's not the. Is H4? Is... He's going H4. I was like, I hope that's not the town center going up at the HR. But, but, but look, it's the, still the Falconets from the two Falc just getting some trade because the hand mortars are elsewhere. I think the hand mortars He's are still in base, so just retreat, chilling. Yeah. Switch carriers are strong, but the oh, that's three fouls. They're, they're trained. They're not. They're trained from an artillery foundry, and that's why. That's why because Aiken sent Roman. He went Roman because he wants to spam artillery, which is perfect versus a switch player. Because he's had to maybe go into the fourth age, because he might see that as his only win condition to go maybe go like guard carriers, Svey lifeguards. But uh, mass falconets or mass cannons just shuts that down. And I think that's a great play here from Aiken. Perez has gone for a Russian fort, actually, from the consulate. The there, yeah. I feel like wow, that's... you don't see... That's not too bad, because like, he just denies so much humps as well here. Although, well, yes he's not going to deny these, though. Yeah. It's, it's, de it, it's map control, it's defensive, but it's not, you can't move the fort with you, and that means you haven't spent that export on German trickles. So for the same price, you can ally the German and get all three trickles. For the same price or... as one fort, you get all three trickles. Okay, that's a lie. You can, you, can, you can definitely ally Germany and get the two wood and gold trickles. Oh, even so. just the two, I'd much rather the trickles. I... Yeah. 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 And if Perez went to the fourth age, you know, you would need 800 exports to get the factory, which I don't think he's going to the fourth age. It doesn't really matter. Handmore's come out, two Falconets for the age up bonus. And, you know, Perez needs to do something before Kinesi can spam. And meanwhile, he just can't help the push here from. Um, Aiken. Culverys do come out, there's some gold mines being hit cool. from Ethan. He, he hasn't got too much of a power spike behind this. Musk's trained very well with the... He might even have some H2 Musk techs, techs as well, but they're so strong. Yeah. Two Culverys, three Falks. Uh, it's an artillery micro here. And he's had might take off the nets. But overall, I don't... I, if we check out the north side, just quick, have a quick brief look. We've got heavy cans of battle pop, two Culverys in the queue. He might lose that forward town centre, but that will, when that fight really kicks off, that's going to go juicy. Back down to the other side. Too cool. He's not actually starting to take this, but he's starting to hold his position. It's, it's not too bad. Um, Aiken will need to, that's tip, will need to fall back, but top, I think top side, no, the heavy cans are out, and we're about to see some big, big numbers on the board in terms of units killed. Look at that splash damage. I know he's backing off now, but uh, oh, it's just absolutely... Yeah. It's interesting how Perez's scores now somewhat increased but quite a bit. Izad's has just fallen off a cliff due to the being being pushed, but Kinesi carrying it. Late game, age four French. I reckon he's gonna go for a uh, mechanism just spamming the uh, two factories. He was sent in the heavy cannons and just get those factories behind and he'd be looking to be on the offensive here. There's so many goons as well to take to do with the hand mortars. The Falks will then be unchallenged. Yeah, four Falks, two heavies, one culver in. What does <laughs> what does the what does horse are what does the hand mortars do versus all of that stuff? They just stand there and pray to God. <laughs> That's what they do. 
<laughs> yeah, we'll just shoot in that general direction. I hope we kill some of the artillery. He's that saying that can you see his French home seat level seven? <laughs> yeah. I the thing is I remember I remember Kinesi playing French on Baja California versus like a lower rated opponent of an early stage of tournament. Mm. And Kinesi, Kinesi did a French water boom. Before like um fishing boats got changed to like seventy wood, like when there's still hundred wood and everyone's just like and losing still their minds. Like <laughs> Oh he absolutely trashed lie. his opponent. Absolutely trashed him. It was just it was just so unseen and unheard of. It was like yeah. Oh, we're getting a bit of lag here. Might reduce my settings for the next game as well. But um, Harrison, the two one v ones, like you said, splitting your opponents. Look at all those um, uh, arbs just being blown apart by the uh, heavy cannons, and there's nothing to contest them. Like there's literally nothing to contest all that artillery. And and, and yeah, tip winning the two Kolb exchange on the southern side allows. Mm himself to push his falconets in to cause some more carnage and he's adds you can see his score his pressure resources he cannot afford to rebuild culverins he wants to be building falconets to to, to deal with the mass but look at all this artillery spam here from tip this is the royal mint paying off big time behind this that gold mine base from the top still standing though and uh, he's adds called it look at that well played uh, well, played. well played there from both players by who, who am I calling well played more? I I I think I think Tip played very well that game. I'd give, I'd give it to Tip MVP that game. Yeah. That's Damn. really good. That was interesting. Interesting. I feel like front um, French Brit. I don't know about you, but I think especially on this map, such a strong um, sieve that just benefits so much from map control. You know, it was really the early two modeled, and contained. Yeah. Yep. It was the early two TPs there from France in H one, just building up a bank of experience. He you can see probably went. Uh, Fourville, 700 wood, 700 gold. So he looked like he was going for like a naked FF, but managed to squeeze in probably an extra gold card in before. Oh, yeah, wait, Fourville, 700 gold, 700 wood. Anyway, aged up, but still had the tempo to then send in two Falk, Cav Combat, 1k yeah. wood, 1k gold, come up to the next stage, something along those lines as well, and just did well. Uh, let's give a shout out to Kinesi's Falk Control mid map, because I was saying that this is going to be a weak spot for the. Um, Kinesi tip, but they need to hold off and wait for tip to be the th uh, third age, must combat, vet, vet must before they do anything. But uh, out of nowhere, Kinesi snipes the Izad Falconet and just, just all hell breaks loose afterwards because, oh, I just, and yeah, that was a good play that was. No, oh, definitely, definitely. Can we look at, can we look at, can we yeah. look at Mill pop of that fight? Sure, sure. Wait, really, before we do, Harrison, do you remember this uh, scenario with Gem Dums on uh, Flying Crows, a certain. ESOC greatest moments when they go poof and they explode and it finishes the game. Please tell me you remember that. Mm, you no. don't know that. Oh, I hope someone in no. remembers that. Oh, that's sad. With interjection. What, what, was, what, what was the context though of it? What was the context of the game? Um, it was a 1v1. I can't remember who was playing. Um, what did they go? Like, was it a final or was it like a first round? Between I, I, think, two I think it was, it was, it was, a, it was a final in some ESOC tournament, like a, like a spring or like something. Um, and it was, do you remember, do you remember the old, like, western map, where, where it's like that town in the centre? Oh, Bonnie Springs! Yeah, that's the one, yeah, and it was on that map, and he resigns just as the thing explodes, and it's like this nice little bit of fireworks. Uh, I used to, I used to, I used to love watching games of Bonnie Springs, but they brought it back now as Hungarian Plains, without a town in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Vividly, put a town back, please. Um, but yeah, military yeah. unit pop. Let's have a look. Although, although not much of a bigger swing as I imagined, it was the both uh, sides squaring off. One was trying to push forward to punish the age ups and try and take advantage, but once they lost the Falcons, they were just running. So mm. then all that military from Tit was able to be upgraded. That was sometimes you expect Brit to be losing units on the age up because they tend to hold up the momentum, but in team, it works so well. And um, yeah, the must combat into Roman, a nice little card order there from Tit. Definitely, definitely, definitely. I can also see the bill pop from Brit as well. I feel like they kept him out here. Holy shit, look at that. He's, almost, he's literally doubled these ads. <laughs> I, know, I know the talks and stuff, but it's just funny to see. Um, I'm going to look at the res as well. Actually, not that... A lot of pros is down. It's actually pretty close. More well, close than I expected, to be fair. Uh, we'll check out scores. And then we'll hop into the decider. 
We're going to see a best of five on the first semi finals for Ace of Spades. I'm loving it, Harrison. I'm loving it. We've got to catch yeah, another game? Oh. I mean, yay! Harrison's. Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, surely you're enjoying it, Harrison. Watching no, you it's play. Good, it's good. Yeah, I, honestly, well, I, I do. Say, that that micro in that game was like full on. That was pretty good. What I would say with Ezad and Perez in particular, th these two guys have probably played the most 2v2s in DE uh, together on the ladder, I reckon. Because even in the early DE, that's probably the most, the most of the time those two players spent together. Because I, I think for the longest of the time, Perez just wasn't playing 1v1s. Mm. Ezad was doing a bit of everything. But I think those two were always doing two, uh, 2v2s and maybe getting cleaters in on the action for the 3v3s. Um, Kinesi and uh, Tip probably the players with the most tournaments 2v2 experience, I reckon. I, I think that. I'd um, say so, yeah. I'd yeah, back up both of that. One thing, though, uh, if I may uh, ask, do you know who you, Big Youth Study is? Big Youth Study? He's He was number two for quite a while on the Team Elo ladder, and now he's taken over Izad. He's number one. Oh. L l l I I'll tell you, he's probably not called Big Youth Study because who calls that's such a weird name. Is it someone Smith? I, I, I don't know. I just wonder if anyone knows who this guy is. Just out of curiosity. Oh, I mean, the thing with these things, remember, is that you, all you need is a, two accounts of really low ELO, then one person with a high ELO, so that actually when you do win games, you actually get the um, lower ELOs, ELO as well, just to help and just jump your, your, your account higher and higher. That's why I kind of like Team Elo doesn't really matter these days, but people sure. still respect when we want Elo. Sorry, mm -hmm. sorry to trash on the Team Elo system. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially when people now transition to kind of the custom lobby meta. It's just like uh, actually Team Elo is going to be a thing of the uh, um, thing of the past, past yeah. really quickly. And I, uh, they've got to bring it ranked lobbies back for Team. I just, I can't. I I, under I understand the reasons for not, but the problem is that you can't play. A, t a team ranked game solo queue in the ranked cloud at the moment because because you just can't join with other randos versus a stacked team it just doesn't work and it's, uh, where with custom lobbies you can't actually fo form up the balanced teams and kind of get things going hey, exactly another yeah. time another time we're off tangent off topic on a tangent discussion we have to finish yeah, the series the final game oh <laughs> oh, oh my god seen the saves in the map we could be here for a long time i know i think this is honestly in my opinion this is such a fitting end to see um he's adam perez going ports in russia versus um tit and kinesis india and ports i feel like if there's any game we're gonna finish oh. on with these two teams this is the this is the matchup and um, this is the map i i gotta say tit nisi tit with the indians Kinesi with the Portuguese, like these two are masters with their respective sieves, are like, absolute masters on a bit of a weird water map as well. Ah, oh, this is gonna get, this is gonna get spicy. Oh, definitely. I'll switch over and we'll get right into it. Brilliant. Let's let's hit it off. On Alaska, Izad and Perez gonna be spawning in the bottom of the map. Uh, we're gonna see Russia taking the top side and Ports taking the bottom. Uh, so definitely not favourable there, although Ports from uh, Kinesi is going to be on the bottom as well, and Tit India is going to be on the top of the map. Uh, so whoever's going to get this little lagoon here, definitely look. And if the lagoon, and if you're greedy, the uh, top little bulge there, uh, going to be securing those those whales in the centre of the map. Now Harrison, how many are there? I do believe it's two, four, six, seven, eight whales. There's another cheeky one back I here. No, you're the man of the camera. You tell me. I'll, I'll, I'll squint I'll to the mini map. For eight, you. eight, eight <laughs> humpback whales. Um, that's lucky. In the Look meantime, in the meantime, you, yeah. you, you discuss the next five minutes. I will get my fingers out. And I'll count. I'll give you a fish report. And actually, I love I will it. Give I you love a fish it. I'll, I'll do it. I'll Ladies it. and gentlemen, you heard it from the man himself. We're going to count the fish one by one. Um, anyway, so we're going to we'll check out decks in a sec. But uh, Port Russia versus India. I feel like, uh, obviously, we're going to see some uh, water play from uh, both ports. And I feel like Strelet or Gurkha, what wins that fight? Uh, it's going to be down to trades, but I'm not too sure who wins versus uh, Strelet and Gurkha. I personally would probably say Gurkha. Um, but I feel like at different times, early game, Strelet would definitely beat the Gurkha. But, you know, hitting sort of uh, late age three, early age four, the Gurkha would pull ahead there, um, especially bashing out of Mansabdar. We'll see decks here. We'll see if uh, Russia or India has the better support deck. 
uh, in terms of water. It does have coastal defend, um, defenses coming out from Izad and uh, Mamelukes as well, actually. Um, but definitely going to get whale oil and the rendering plant advanced docked as well. And we'll check out India's, uh, sorry, we'll check out Russia's deck first, actually. Um, so Perez hasn't quite selected his support here. Um, just wait for that in a sec. Uh, we'll see if we see some. Josh, yeah. I'm ready to report back on the fish count. I count 46 pods of fish. 46? So let, 46. Let, let, let's just say it's 50, but to be fair here, because it's quite most of the fish are behind each. Uh, mm. Player size of the map is not all readily available, but there's certainly a about. So if it, if it was fifty pods of fish, that's about twenty five thousand bits of food in the water. So it's 20, a lot of twenty five thousand. Is it fifty thousand? No, because it's five hundred twenty five times by. Oh, sorry, I thought you said fifty fish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah fifty pods of fish. Yeah. Times by five hundred is twenty five thousand. Think. It is. Sorry, I can't do that. Yeah, yep, yeah. That's correct. <laughs> that's correct. Oh my god. Oh, Royal Clan, where'd you find this geezer? Like, yeah, oh. shut up. I, uh, I do not do. Actually, surprisingly, it's kind of insult. It's hard to, like, bad for me because I am doing an engineering degree that does a lot of math. So, uh, yes, I know. I know how bad. I'm going to pick up Jerome as well. We, we love Jerome. 420 HP. 10 hand attack. Um, anyway, back to Russia's deck. Uh, some good support water here. Um, two caravels on the frigate. Um, but definitely we're focusing more on land. And if we check out uh, um, Kinesi's water deck as well, looks almost identical to Izad's, just without the four Mamelukes. Um, I think it's the exact same deck, except instead of four Mamelukes, he's got heavy cannons. There's a, there's a few other interesting tweaks there. I've noticed that both Izad and Perez both have spice trade in their mm. decks for land, food, and berries income, which I find a bit... Strange, but Izad's got a water deck which has spice trade in it. I, I've never seen it before. True, I don't know yeah, if I ever yeah, will see that yeah. again. It's not, re not really recommended because you've got to try and send in like um. You can't, you can't afford the shipments in time, right? Nah. Oh, or maybe this is a complete fake out here from Izad. He's gone, he's gone eco theory first card. He hasn't gone schooners. He's gone eco theory. Oh no way! No way! <laughs> he does the fake out on has the he, water. Has it? Has it actually sent it? I... He has sent what? Yeah, he has. He has. He's, he's not going yeah. water. He's, he's gone. He's gone market eco theory. So you may go spice trade next and just boom on land and then go for a time in, maybe. Potentially, potentially. With, with, with Portuguese going hussars and Russian going strelets, where mm. Titnis is kind of like. Um, so it looks like Aikens. I've gone. He's either going defensive aggro, defensive, or defensive agra, yeah. carney. Yeah, defensive aggro. We got two. Um, docks topside for port likely to be where the Portuguese second well, second second TC in base. In base yeah. Can easily have to be defensive as well. Mm. Just real quick, I'm gonna check oh. out India's deck as well. And um, Harrison, there's no uh, water support here. As a matter of fact, it's all just land. Um, so. I don't I, think I don't, I don't. I don't mind it in the sense that there's siege elephants there to help support. Is that two? Is that what team four flow elephants in the? Third age, that's so that's a meme. That has to be a no, meme. No, 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 no. Arubi. Remember, team, they look different. They look team, different. Team Kalari, Arubis. What on earth is a Team Kalari? They've Kala done it again. Kalari? <laughs> team, team. I'll just send Team. Just send, say, Team fucking Arubis Swordsman. <laughs> oh my. Why'd you do that? They look. Is that. What does the Arubis. I forgot what the old Arubis Swordsman look, look. No, you, you do see them. Yeah. Oh, it's, the. the so why why does why does the single Yuri Swordsman regiment's shipment and the Yur single Yuri Swordsman look different to the team? Yur oh, so confusing. So confusing. Harrison, what's my, the Lucas settlement? Brain. Is it the, is he getting it for Viltex? Why would he be getting it? Um, no, he's that's going Nukas. So the thing with Nukas is they are very efficient sieges. They they survive three town center shots. And have a decent siege attack. They're mostly food based instead of wood, so that ties in for the whole eco theory spice trade economy here. Um, but uh, yeah, they're looking to put the pressure on. And uh, can you see walling up here? If Isa can try and catch that from being built, he, he really wants to have an open path into the base. So yeah, he's going to move in. He and, uh, up, yeah, yeah the action the is. Just imagine if this was new patch as well. Easy, I could re could have remotely built that in transition without having yeah. to an explorer build it for cheaper as well. Could have maybe gone for the other Nat TP as well. That change is so ridiculous. It was a massive. Oh, I was like, I, I still I still don't understand it. So it's like, 
you can you can remotely build it for a cheaper amount. That's literally just the, that's literally it, right? It is. It is it. And it's like, oh, but it costs sixty seconds. I'm like. Just, just imagine having one villager try to build a training post on its own. I think one villager on its own is like a minute, a half, two minutes. Yeah. All the res is he's lock Oh, it's... Oh, it's... Oh, it doesn't matter. We're, we're in. We've got elephants on top of strats. Ease of them pairs going in deep. They're, they're committing hard and fast. They're going hard and fast, just like what we like to see. And um, The thing is, town center fire on strats and nuclear is just not what they want yeah. because strats... Oh, Stratus are too shot by regular TC, yeah. Um, Kinesi is forced to go into uh, CM, I think, if he wants to defend this. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's, he's got CM. Well. But there's a lot of yeah, nuke in here, they should be able to... Oh my god. Uh, nuke can hand not. combat pretty poor. Yeah. Yeah, it's back. But, um, nuke can war yeah. chief, though. Now that guy's a beast. Is it called a nuke war chief? What's the... What's, what's it called? I think it's war chief. That's, yeah. that's... <laughs> it's, prob it's probably racist if you call it Nuka War Chief. It it's probably been like renamed like the Nuka High yeah. Elder. Of the or something like that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> it probably has though. Um, gonna be force forcing the sow back in. He did pick up a few sepoys for free, just like you know, running him back home. Um, do you, do you commit to the to the um, CM Town Center, or do you try and push under the agar? I don't know. Um, no, you, you, you have to go to India now because you can't risk a big batch CM pop with an 8 bow shipment. Um, I, he probably doesn't have 8 bows in his deck, to be honest, but oh. uh, you can't... He's we, getting the he has out. 20 land villagers. He has land, 20 land villagers. He, both TCs would be doing 135 damage, so the nukes yeah. will drop in one volley, so you just can't sit anymore. And it's just going to put some good pressure on India. Um, Kinesi is still not yet having much of a land presence in terms of military. He's actually training two villas and three boats at this time. It's, it's an incredible amount of, of eco training, but now India is housed. He can't train anymore. And the Agri Fort is just a glorified blockhouse. It's strong, but it's not ridiculous. It's not overpowered in that sense. And like I say, with these nukes and strats, they resist the, building the fire very well. The strats are out of position oh, though, Harrison. Oh, they're getting picked off by the Sowers here. Harris. And the Sowers, the, the Sepoy can now take volleys onto the Strelet here. They're all going to be picked up, almost all of them. And now the, the nuke Clubman are completely vulnerable to these Sepoy here. Oh, and there's no... A, a oh, there moment. is. There's one yeah. reinforcing Yeah. Because yeah, okay. that's the only thing stopping the Sepoys going in is the trading with the... Um, uh, yeah. The Stratus. I, I, if it was also a double batch of Minutemen from the Town Center, Tit would get a, actually a good trade here, I'd say. He's actually going to try and bait him in a little bit uh, deeper, but he can get in. Do see fighting the water is actually very important now. He's had to send him two cargo, time over the cargo. Because he's got Nuka as well, he has access to canoes. Uh, is that a castle being dropped into Goldmine to try and support? Aiken dropping. Yeah. Consulate. Oh, Consulate. Looks like a castle. Uh, well, that yeah, could be. That's a different story. <laughs> The thing is here with Kinesi, his second town center with CM is in his base, unfortunately now defending nothing, and that's just that little slight tactical play, put put the pressure on Kinesi's base, force the defensive shipment, I don't think and it was change jumps to water. Yeah. This, obviously this is a map with no training posts, no extra XP, so he's Kinesi's sending in his two carriers now, but it's all his time, he's losing momentum and position on the map. And uh yeah, it's, it's so far so you can really well play it here from either side. I wonder if he can snipe this. Does he see the next dot coming up? No, he doesn't see the next dot. No. I, th I think so. Kinesi is right to just slow march, build um, docks way right down the coast because he needs to protect the fishing boats. There's no, there's no, there's no reason to lose fishing boats in this situation here from Kinesi's point of view. He's managed to. Actually, fend back off the caravels, and now the caravel shipment has landed for Kinesi. So, so stabilised the water, um, which is good to see. I think it, once he's had sees the two vales, it would be like, ah, oh, well, I've missed my opportunity. But uh, Strat's just sank, token, um, soaking and tanking. I was like, sanking up. I was like, that's Sank not a word. <laughs> sanking is not a word. But yeah, uh, soaking up the damage. It is a word. Yeah. <laughs> If, if I now say Sankin, you know exactly what I mean with respect to Age of Empires. But yeah, he's doing a good job diverting building fire onto these um, very cost-efficient units. And all this time here, Perez is just training 
uh, batches of three villagers up to 29 kills, up to now 32. Mm. Over time, he will scale quite nicely. Izad, train two girls in the land. Good pressure, uh, scaling quite nicely. Kinesi will eventually outboom, but at the moment, Aiken's committing to fighting 2v1 in his base and not scaling as he wants to because he has to defend. There's co Ots Ottoman Consulate Minutemen. I'm not too sure we've seen Town Center regular Minutemen here, but with Cossacks on the field as well, he might actually want to get in the, the sentries on the action as well. But we've always seen boys. It, it, this is a good defensive and tip. Um, mm. It's a good play so far. Essentially 2v1 in this fight, and he's going to force yeah. it back. And how's the cost of it? I feel like that's a lot That's a lot to batch the Minutemen, and it's a lot to batch the Hussars yeah. as well. Um, if he can fight, like, chase him back, I'd, I'd chase him back as far as he can before um, the Strillet Mass starts to overwhelm you again. I think you would I think you would have hoped for a little bit better micro there from Izad Perez in, in the sense of maybe putting Nuka into cover mode to sank to, mm. to sank up the I said it again. Yeah, it's official. To soak up the uh Sepoy fire. The um Oh no, look at this. Shut it out. Position is managed to get back, that's fine. But, um with Kinesi now on the field with SARS contributing to land fight as well. Um Is that gonna be going up fast as well? Agent. Yeah, this is awkward because he's aging fast. He's got a second town center. No shipment raid to spend, so oh, maybe yeah. he's just going to try and go for a trainer frigate and research that Nuka. But I, I suppose it is for the town center as well. Might just sack the strats off to honestly and save the clubs. Is the mm. This is not a fight, but Ezel and Perez want to take a tour. Oh, actually, 20 more strides turn up yeah, to the body. Yeah, probably add something in. Damn. Gonna force him back and deal with some big casualties there. Mittman all getting picked off. Some good luck out there for Perez. Um, water fights are coming down now. The blockhouse is going to be dealing some damage onto the car dogs, but at the end of the day, two versus three here. Doesn't have anything built up into the docks here, so it won't get assisting, won't get assisting damage from them. Uh, they've been forced to batch some canoes to force the caravels back, Harrison. Um, Has, um, like can we check out Kinesi's shipments? Has he sent a uh, rendering plan? Has he shipped and, and has he shipped yes. naval combat? He Same shipped both. both. Okay. Ah, so, um, he's uh, kind of wants to be thinking about naval combat because it's a 25% combat card on, on ships. It's something like you can't really come back from. He's going for team coastal defenses, which is such a smart play. He's, he's boosting his um, teammates' blockhouses. But he really needs to get a town centre out on the coast as well, and maybe some fishing boats in the docks to tank this up. And Shred's going deeper game. Where's the anti cav? What's he doing? Oh dear. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, is that GG? Uh -oh. oh no, they're uh -oh. going to get there just in time. But no, they're still going to lose quite a few though. Uh, no, lo lo losing Shred's for free is it's not, it's not really a GG moment, but that's not what he really wanted because. Because it, the, the clubs can't path their way through because they're not the same like mm. the same sieve. They're, they're trying to path in formation. It's really awkward. It's also yeah, clubs versus cab are just not great. He kind of kind of needs decent. goons now. He needs goons or um, pivot to more realistic units like Bet Musk. Nuka. Also, build limits are a problem. He's got the second Nuka. Well, he has to like you said build limits. Hmm. To be fair, he's just focused on Nuka and water. That's that's all his role is, where it's kind of just enough to, to do with the Huss and the Strats come to you quite well, but it's actually Kinesi now just spamming it, plugging in the side of his food eco. There's, 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 you need Trigoons in the land now, guys. You need to react he's a, to this. He's isn't batching anything at the moment. He's only starting. He literally only just queued the goons. Although, is that when Drew goons the back? And, and so the, the thing is, the Kinesi's point of view, like, just due to Alaska's map design, there's going to be a fight on the top side about a kickoff now with the, with the naval ships, but it's all on a little tight space. And we've got two docks, probably quite a few fishing boats in there, two outposts, naval combat caravels, but all the fishing boats behind the um, dying town centres are kind of gathering in safety because they can't squeeze past. The only way to get to them is going past that, well, meg megapolis of defensive structures of outposts, docks, caravels, everything. Mm -hmm. And the frigate, it's a good shipment, but like you said, just getting into the two outposts and the, the uh, we, um, docks. Yeah. Can we check Izad's uh, card? Does he also send naval combat? 
Yeah, oh, he's at mid combat. Yeah. Oh no, no, sorry, yeah, yeah, he's at. Yeah, he's at, he's yeah, at. Yeah, no, he's fine. Oh, I think it was Kinesi who sent Team Coastal Defenses. Ah. Okay, that's a big that's a big problem then, because you don't yeah. not push Team Coastal's up. Yeah, you can't. And Advanced Dock. Okay, you, you're sending it now. You cannot push Can't Team push. Coastal Advanced Dock. Especially docks. in that tight area, like you said. You just, to us, at this point, you just leave it, focus back on the land. But then again, that's all that fishing behind just, just India and trap Portuguese. It. You just can't do it. Make sure you can't get the center whales, you know, and then it'll yeah. slowly, you know, fall off and be forced to, you know, push out onto you. If he, had, was a, if he was able to click the stats on the dock or on outpost, he'll realise that this is just a bad idea. Ah, mm -hmm. oh, Tit finally aging up. His wanders forward though, might be under pressure by Stratus in a bit. He will at least see in the scouts the actual ones are coming up. More goons here would be very nice, but um, good action. Stratus are veteran, Stratus is in the third age. Both, both India and uh, Kinesi looking to go to the third age as well, so they'll get there. Oh, it's a Tower of Victory. It's going to be inspiration time in wood crates. Well, it's like the optimal... Is it... I feel like 600 seconds? How long is the Tower of Victory timer? What, to reset? Yeah. Or... Because, like, do they have... Uh, a, is, it, is it worth them, like, taking a fight when it goes up? After, after he gets his, um, Vet Gurkha in? Trying to take that fight, do a bit of damage with the victory, Tower of Victory, and then do they have time to like use it again later, maybe in a naval battle or something? Um, or oh, naval battle, stupid view, he's not even a war. Well, he's, he's, he's not going to be in, he's not, he's not any naval uh, units, but I think if he can get a surround, if, he, if you can ever get a surround, it's always, it's, it is really good, it, it's like 15% attack and HP and 10% speed, I think. Or might be just 10% across the board, but it's very good in terms of the bonus and. I'm kind of surprised how T India's kind of gone to charm our gate basically for every single game, but the extra mode is fine. Okay. So yeah, fight's gonna happen. Close range, yeah. Tifa's gonna enjoy this. This is this is inspiration time if you can he called it inspiration's in, but he's actually don't move, just stand still and fight, stand still and fight. If you move you are moving, you're not fighting. Yeah, exactly. Kinesi just slam in there, that's that's a trap. And uh, inspiration's uh kinda of wasted there. That's a shame. Oh well. Maybe he's waiting for uh, Kinesi's uh, vet hus vet hus in. He's actually called Big Minute Men from one of the town centers to help out as well. And uh, Team Yurumi in here from Tit and Kinesi. So great units to deal with the Stradats and Dragoons, especially the Dragoons to get underneath there. They, they all resist. They all resist. Actually, I think Yurumi have cover mode. Maybe. We'll see. see. It might be. A, it might be. A, it might be a unit you actually want to go cover mode if they have it. But yeah, they don't range resist. Like they're sk they're like skirmishers anyway, so they mm. kind of resist skirm goon. Organs coming back from Kinesi just gotta be careful he doesn't get smart from the goons, eh? But this is a good positioning here in this little choke. A few volleys onto the stillet. And the the army will be able to force any goons force off any goons. So I feel like this artillery is gonna have to push Perez back. Hus here. coming in, Hus coming in. But uh Aiken's got Tit's gone back. This, this, this is the time you slam it in all together. Mm. Another organ coming out being badged. I just love how Paris just spamming Stratus. So he's just lost so many yeah. to Hussars with his Look at that! At the end of the... Oh, yes, at, yes! At the end of the game, you'd be like, look at Kinesis kill death ratio. I'd be like, this is why, this is why. This is why. But, but it doesn't matter because. Because the Stratus are taking the fire, but the Dragoon Mass is just massing and massing and massing, and soon he'll be going to um, Hussars as well. He's going to try and move in and uh, pick up the Organ Guns, which is he's certainly overpriced these guys quite yeah. a bit, I think. He's lost, so he's lost way yeah. too much. Yeah, I, I always get... Oh, jeez, my God, he's lost way too much for that. Look at the scores. They just turned so far, then. Oh, that's not what he wanted. He's, he lost that part of the goons there, I think. The fishing fleet comes. Yeah. I think Izad's called this right for not being super offensive on the water versus um, Kinesi. Just ensure... Because the idea is actually, with that blockhouse, they've got they've got um, visibility for any villager trying to drop a dock on the other side of the map, so that's not going to happen, so they know it's all safe. He's yeah. going to go in for a nice little... Um, 
right on the fishing boats, but he's gonna back off before the Armada is gonna get annoyed. Yeah, he's the Armada of canoes. He, if he could eventually push out, if he, he, he's <laughs> trying to um, focus, focus yeah. on his naval uh, presence now, I feel, because he, he, he realizes that he can't, if you've got all these fishing boats just doing nothing, it's not good because Ezad's been in the Third Age longer than Kinesi, so he's going to have more villages on the map, like actual regular land villages, and they're probably a little bit more teched up than what Kinesi has. Uh, Kaleli, no, this is this is a last. The gold mines out. There's, yeah. there's all these bills on that mine. He just hasn't seen it. Look, it's yeah. literally like Kaleli. There it is. There it is. Yeah. All right, now. Claire was the saying there's no Wales map. There's actually no Alaska. Wales all spawn middle, so it's actually a nice little kind of a map control element on the water yeah. as well. Actually, has he seen it? I think he might have seen it. Yeah, he's, he's seen, seen it. it. Oh. Ouch. In they come the goons as well. And bonk, bonk, bonk. There's, there's no way for the villas to run because there's a wall there. Like, that, that yeah. wall is so smart. The cliff to the um, nuclear place. He, um, Perez may lose a bit of map control, middle map, as a result of having no anti cav here, but this is such a great trade here for Izad. He's, he's lo loving it. Do the villas have great coats? I don't think they do. Well, it doesn't really matter. They do. No, they do. Oh, he should get a refund. They're shocking. Where did he buy his greatcoats from? Um, Walmart or something? <laughs> they don't seem very great to me. One of the Portuguese version of Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Shit, that was a lot. How many bills was that? That was like 14? 13? Uh, yeah, 13, 14. I think, I think is a good estimate there. And all of a sudden, you know, the fishing boats that are all idle over here, all of a sudden, you know... There's, there's, actually, there's, actually two, there's actually two oh pods God. of fish still um, behind their beds, which is kind of cute, but it doesn't really matter. Yeah, oh, I haven't seen it. Uh, Russia, also, yeah. also Russia is now on three town centers, so give it another four minutes and Russia will be cranking up that economic. Is that 79 villas? Yeah. Russia 3TC is probably the fastest village of production there is, probably after. Um, adoption Lakota with 3TC full fertility, but it's just so many fields there. He's probably sent himself, um, he sent refrigeration to help out. He sent an eco ferry, that's a good shout as well because he doesn't need the gold income too mm. much. He wants to upgrade the wood as well for Shrelets. He needs to be full pop, five block houses, and just trade in. Oh, here come the Portuguese Armada. What a sight it is on the top side. And I think. I think Kinesi would actually win this fight on the, the, the naval side. Like, he's got enough to take this fight and start to exhibit some control. Yes, yeah, he still uh, doesn't have coastal with, defenses in, so he probably will. But Izzad hasn't known. But the thing is, he's has known to the fourth age, and do they have the land momentum? I think they do. Now with all this gold that Kinesi's got, he's starved gold for the time being. This is a bit more of a distraction or delay. Izzad pushing Imperis into the land for Gunan's, um Thing. Are they Jeanette goons? Soon to will they soon will be, but they're not quite yet. But uh Strella Jeanette's in on top of Tinisi. Tits on uh, rice paddies, he's, he's no hunt, no gold. Would yeah, inti has got no gold, he's he's on rice paddies for the gold income and he's gonna fall behind very quickly. He only has hey, what he's got sec he's got a second town centre to the east just a little bit, but it's just in between the two players' bases, it's not on so much natural resources. Culverins here from Perez winning the coal. Trade. Kids have got one more organ gun. Oh, it's organ, wasn't it? Yeah. Mm. Villagers are not exposed. They're going to run to the coast. And Tits um, Eco is just starting to plummet. He's starting to feel really strangled by the pressure that uh, Izad and Perez is exhibiting. Does have another town center up back here. Maybe they'll try and hold at this sort of point. Also, the offshore support is going to. Help out quite a bit too, but I feel like if they they can't really let another town center go down at this stage. Oh, how many bills does he have? Let's have a look. One forty six. Oh, nu nuclear raids going straight into Kinesi's base as well because he's got three population to do it. He's just might as well. He's just spamming base full food nukes yeah. into the base, and just you just look at the map and how much land Portugal has in Isla has cleaned up the hunts and berries on his side. Just everything has been devoured. Just spending it on villages and nukes. Yeah, now Cools, with, the, with you know, the map control, um, Cools on the shore going to be able to snipe out those uh, frigates there. And um, the canoe is coming in clutch, going to be able to push uh, Kinesi back uh, off, his, off his docks there. Um, still has access to these uh, whales and uh, fish at the top. But um, yeah, Tit and Kinesi definitely getting a push back into a corner here. Oh, well, the, well, well a, 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 a Portuguese frigate has somehow got to the backs of the bases. He just ran through. 
Whose frigate is that? Oh no, it's just a no. It's um, Keith's frigate. It's just a red water flag point. Just oh yeah, that's what the purple, which red dot is there. Okay, I was like, oh wow, that's an amazing play, but yeah. <laughs> All that like... wood chopping from a Kinesis. So many vills there at risk. Oh, uh, we now have Jeanette Dragoons in. Or whatever they're called now. Or Legion Dragoons. Legion Dragoons. What sounds better, Jeanette or Legion? Um, well, Legion Dragoons, but the thing is, the Royal Musks Portuguese were the Legionnaires, but now I don't know what they're called. What are they, what are they called? Like, where. Well, no, no, they are the Legionnaires. It's like, where am I? Yeah, they, yeah, they were Grail Musk, because it's now yeah. the Legionnaires. There's Legions and Legionnaires. It sounds like a disease, yeah. Legionnaires. I mean, it is a disease, Legionnaires disease. Oh, well. Oh, oh my hoot's on the artillery! Yeah. Woohoo! Bog. Give him a bit more time. <laughs> but yeah, it's all over at this point. So Look what, at the what have we Look learned? The <laughs> what have we learned? If in doubt, spam shallots, I think, this game. Mm -hmm. Even after the pretty good fight over um, on the shore before. Uh, the GGs have been called, Kidney has resigned, Tit is tapped out, and we have found our first finalists in the Golden um, League, Golden side of the bracket, Izad and Perez, defeating Tit Nisi. So, is it Team Pizad or Team Irez? <laughs> Whichever one you want to pick has defeated Team Tit Nisi 3 to 2, and that was a pretty close series, uh, probably the closest series there has been, or oh, mm. maybe the uh, Titnisi versus Maito Kaiser might have been closer, but what a great series that was. Definitely, yeah, congratulations to the boys, that was really well done, and what a uh, fitting way to bring it up with double ports on Alaska. Um, so congratulations, uh, that, was, that was great, check out the post game actually. And no, I'm not doing the Kadeen saying KD. I know it's Russia there. <laughs> but holy shit, 400 shallots, that's a decent amount. I don't know. It, no, it's a, it's a pretty bad kill death ratio. Didn't even get to two. Like, just imagine, like, playing like a. Let's, let's, let's imagine this is Call of Duty. Like, tr just imagine bragging about a kill death ratio was not even greater than two. Like, that's not, <laughs> that's not my level of gameplay. Um, I love how Ezad's just. Most made unit was the Nuka Clubman. I don't think I've ever really seen that as a That's most made unit. I've seen, I've seen most major units. I've seen most made units of Minutemen. I've seen most made units of Caravels. I've seen most made units of anything and everything. But Nuka Clubman has uh, not really been um, there as a favourite unit. Can we look at the economies specifically? Ease Adam Kinesi because there's two different ideas of how he went about it. I know the end yeah. was a. Uh, very favourite, but I want to kind of like mid game or early game on the um, graph. Just those two players. This is interesting because one's gone for land and one's gone for thing, and that might be a bit of crate income as well. But uh, spice trade definitely pulling like ahead there. You go for, yeah, it seems like when you go for a water boom, you you do have to um, invest, and it is an investment which pays off at later points. Um, kind of around that twelve minutes, uh, the the fish and economy of Kinesi leads to have a greater economy in terms of resource income at that moment in time. But uh, once he runs out of fish at 18 minutes, it just flatlines again and Ezo just takes off. Oh, wow. That's, that's crazy, that is. Definitely, definitely. Uh, even, like, Bill Pop. Kinesi obviously had the bills, but a lot of, like, even, like, peeling off at the end, most of them were idle anyway. I wonder if we can even see fishing boats count as idols, right? Yeah. Probably, oh, yeah, they are. Yeah, they they are. are. Yeah, definitely, yeah. And the thing is, with idle villagers, in this game, in terms of the um, timeline, they can, an idle villager is defined as a village obviously not gathering, mm. garrisoned in a building, or walking. So those fishing boats walking across the map, or sailing across the map, however you want to say it, they counted as idle, and you can see that graph, and the area under the Kinesis graph there is just is an average of like 25, 30 villagers idle for the last six minutes. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of villagers not working. But no, once again, congratulations, guys. Good shit, good shit. Yeah. That was a great game. GK, I hope you have done the predictions. Let me test. He hasn't. GK didn't do the prediction. Oh, dear. What a shocking clown leader. I'll have to finish this that. one. He's adding prayers, game five. GK, I'm disappointed. I'm so shaking my head right now. Um, but yeah, once again, congrats, boys. Congrats, boys. Uh, I'll just switch quickly, 